Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the municipality of Monroeville's work session and Citizens Night. Today is Thursday, August 3rd, 2017, approximately 7 p.m. If we would all kindly rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, before I open up the Citizens Night portion of our meeting, I do want to put a couple of ground rules out that we're going to adhere to this evening. I know many of you here with, I think, a couple of different issues, so um, we're going to adhere to the five-minute rule very strictly, uh, and I would appreciate if you would stay to that. I do not want to gavel anybody down, but... There are many people that have apparently want to speak. If you do want to speak, you must be a Monroeville resident or have a business in Monroeville. If I do not know you, I may ask for your driver's license. You will have to produce that before you address this council. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce up Keith Mangini. He's the president and CEO of Huntley and Huntley. I do believe he's going to go a little bit longer than the five minutes just for the fact is he wants to put out the correct information for all sitting here. I do believe this will resolve a lot of your issues. They are willing to answer some of your questions. We would ask that you please be professional in your uh, manner if you would and we'll try to get this meeting moving fairly quickly. Yeah, there is a above uh, camera that will draw anything down for you. So, gentlemen, if you'll both sign in. Gentlemen, please both sign in on the sheet and then state your name officially for the record. Uh, my name is Keith Mangini. I am the uh, president of Huntley & Huntley. And my name is Ethan Shula, and I'm a geologist with Huntley & Huntley. We have a couple different people with us. I have Paul Burke, who's our uh, in-house general counsel. Uh, as well as representatives from Geokinetics and Cougar Land Services, which many of you have uh, been contacted by. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot of publicity and a little bit of concern going around Monroeville regarding our request and uh, project. He's got to turn around. You got to turn around, buddy. As regarding the uh, seismic program that we're conducting throughout the area, um, but. We wanted to get the opportunity, and, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to stand up here and, and talk about what our plans are and how it's going to affect the community. Because I think as long as I've been in Monrova, which now I've had my office out here for 25 years, but I drove the very first well. Keith, turn this way because the mic will pick you up. They can see you on the camera. Okay. I drove my very first well in Monrova uh, right out of college in 1979. So that kind of goes back, uh, gives you a flavor for what familiarity I have not only with the ordinances of Monroeville but the policies and the politicians that I've dealt with throughout the years. So the first well that I ever planned out here was on the Restland Cemetery which is right off of Patton Street at the time and um, it was as if a Uf UFO was landing in Monroeville because nobody had been acquainted with oil and gas drilling. Um, so there was an ordinance put in place at the time to cover oil and gas drilling based on the activities that I had planned, and that ordinance still is in place today. But nonetheless, I, my office is now here. You know, I was spending so much time uh, dealing with the property owners of Monroeville and the businesses of Monroeville and having my drilling operations out here that I uh, moved my offices from downtown Pittsburgh um, originally to Corporate One back in like 1995 and we kind of bounced around and grown and now I own the building that's down the street <coughs> and uh, that's our our permanent home but our company's been in business in since 1912 and I'm more or less the third generation owner along with a partner Mike Hillbrand and um, since that time we've drilled over 400 wells throughout the communities here on the east side of Pittsburgh you know with Monroeville being the initial we have wells in Murrayville, we have wells in Plum, we have wells in Upper Burrow, we have wells in North Huntington, we have wells all the way from McKeesport all the way to, to Butler County. 
and have uh, worked well with the communities, um, hopefully in establishing and maintaining a good reputation. Um, we have 47 unconventional Marcellus wells, uh, principally north of Pittsburgh on the north side of the Allegheny River, and we're continuing operations going forward. We have roughly 100,000 acres now within the corridor east of Pittsburgh. So um, I do want to state for the record because I think there is concern about Marcellus drilling and how it would affect your community in general. Um, I have no intention of ever drilling a well in, in uh, Monroeville. Um, there's no place to put a pad and even if I could find a place to put a pad there isn't a, a natural gas market it's because unlike the, unconven the conventional wells that I drilled which are are lower pressure the Marcellus wells have higher pressure you need to get major uh, to major arteries to get the, the gas out because the volumes are much greater a typical uh, upper Devonian well that I have would only make about a hundred thousand cubic feet of gas a day and it could go right into the distribution system and it does right in Monroe as an example go into a pipeline go right up the street go into your house and it's utilized in your furnace or your stove so Marcellus well you need to get to the higher pressure bigger volume lines and those just don't exist in in Monroe so even if somebody could come in and say I got enough land to drill a, a Marcellus well it just wouldn't be feasible because of the market but I did want to make it clear that I have no I, no intention and never will drill a well in, Mer in Monroeville uh, that's unconventional not to say I might not drill another unconventional or a conventional well but that kind of dissipated because that market is now dried up the conventional wells really are no longer they're they're no longer economic the Marcellus changed the whole ball game of, of the oil and gas industry so um, we're conducting this 3D uh, seismic survey mainly to evaluate areas that are outside of Monroeville and I think one of the things you need to understand is in order to get a picture <coughs> of a particular piece of property um, I need to have offset so I need to have run my lines a mile and a half beyond what I'm, my target is so if I'm looking at as an example this borough building to see what's going on there underneath the borough building I need sources and uh, receivers a mile and a half away in order to get the fold and the, a really clear picture of what it is so we're in, encroaching on Monroe on the north side and on the south side but nothing is it planned to come into the central portion of, uh, of Monroe there's been seismic surveys already conducted throughout the area and I think a large fear is created just not knowing exactly what a seismic survey in, is entailed these aren't all this is a, a map of the city of Pittsburgh is right on the left side of the map and you have multiple colors and each multiple color is the Ute area which is the the emerald the purple area is the eye, eye on groundhog shoot and that covered one two three four five six seven different townships in Armstrong County and parts of Westmoreland in Indiana I on Groundhog South which is the green covered <coughs> everything east of Monroeville over into Harmony as an example and then Benola 3 which is the purple to the south was the southern part of Allegheny County that was an equitable gas uh, seismic chute and then we have I on Greensburg which was a, a spec chute in other words the company did it on the idea that somebody would buy the data and they would make a profit and now EQT has one that's covering like forward Ross Draver uh, and on down into towards Fayette County on the south side of the map and then our chute is a, the, the largest of the chutes it's 220 square miles is the yellow covers Upper Borough, Allegheny, uh, Washington, Plum, Murraysville, Penn, North Huntington, North for sales so if you look there's kind of like a little mouth that's empty right in the center and that's Monroeville <coughs> and there's no plans to, to do any kind of uh, seismic shoot within that area so where we're sending our permits is on the very fringe of Monroe on the north and on the fringe on the south because Plum Borough is a, a area that allows Marcellus drilling as does North Huntington and North for sales and we have properties in those areas that were part of our historic uh, shallow development and that's what we're trying to image with this seismic survey so 
basically that's the why, the where, and the when is as we permit right now, the permit process is uh, itself takes several months because we need literally 60,000 different permissions from different landowners. So that's why the guys from Cougar are knocking on doors and sending letters and really making a concerted effort to contact. And sometimes I apologize that it's difficult to, to convey a, a polite message and, and we don't want you to feel that um, it's just that they're under pressure to get it done. But if you have any questions regarding <coughs> somebody contacting you from either Cougar or Geokinetics, you know, feel free to call our office and we'll, we'll be happy to answer your questions. Before you go on, Keith, I just want to make it perfectly clear. You're saying there will absolutely be no drilling in Monroeville. Right. Am I correct? That's right. Yeah, it's dead. Unequivocally. Unequivocally. Please proceed. So that's the why, the where, and the when is, uh, you know, our, our target date to try and complete this survey is going on to, to next spring. So we started permitting back in February of this year. We're going to continue the permit process, which is to try and get as many permissions as we can from the landowners, from the municipalities, from state roadways who need permits. And uh, the where, obviously, is everything that's within the yellow that's on this map, and the when is... Uh, November, December, throughout the winter, will actually be in here. And I think I talk, I work closely with EQT on their Benola three shoot, and talk to the guys that kind of carried out that program. And what they actually incurred as Jefferson Borough, as an example, I understand was one of the areas that people were greatly concerned. And when there was so much com concern that they actually carried out the survey, everybody goes, "Well, when are you going to do this?" And they go, "We already did it, and we're done and gone." But it, because it's such an innocuous uh, type of survey that you will never even know that we're there. When Keith, uh, folks, please. Uh, Keith, uh, what I'd like you to do is talk a little bit about the seismic testing. I think there's some concern on that. Uh, I'm hearing that uh, you guys are going to blow up our water lines, our gas lines, and... I, I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. No, I'm going to so let Ethan... Ethan, if you uh, would, please. Ethan is uh, my right-hand man, though, even though he's on the left. <laughs> he's on my He's my right-hand man. He's a geologist. Uh, he's very well-versed, and he'll explain further detail about it. And then we'll bring... And then, back. ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, you will have opportunities to ask questions. <coughs> yes. Please let them proceed. This is <coughs> for not just your benefit sitting here, but for everybody in the audience on or on TV. Please. So, this map kind of describes exactly what he stated. Um, Monroeville is outlined in red, uh, and the, the areas in the cross hash or navy blue colors are the areas that could be included within the chute itself. We have a little bit of section of Monroeville to the north, and about the bottom third of Monroeville. Those are the areas that could be included within the seismic chute itself. Um, a lot of people ask, what do we actually utilize seismic for? Um, this image right here uh, is processed seismic data. Essentially, it's creating uh, an image of the subsurface so that we can plan where we would need to drill our wells. Uh, we take this data and, as geologists, interpret it um, and able to identify the different formations and different structure that you might see in the subsurface. What I mean by structure, we're specifically looking for faulted out areas, areas um, where there's been displacement and areas that you really cannot drill through. So we need to identify those areas in order to drill the most efficient um, and most economic laterals or wells. Can I jump in real quick? Laterals. Yes. I didn't mean to interrupt, but the seismic section, is, which is shown on the monitor, the earth is basically, as you can see, like a layer cake, and you have these layers coming across. The red is the, the top of the Onondaga, which is right above the, the Marcellus, and it kind of jumps across, and you see these little perpendicular lines that are running down through there. Those are faults, and when you're drilling a horizontal well, they're, they create geohazards, and you don't want to drill through a fault uh, with your horizontal well because it'll actually end up, you'll lose your well. So we're trying to make an image and see what basically is going on in the subsurface. Now this particular line is many, many miles long. In fact, it kind of runs almost from beyond Delmo and all the way over to Allegheny uh, Township. So it's probably 10 miles. And each of these little blocks here are probably, you know, five miles or so between them. So the, the idea is to kind of stay right in those flat spots. So the reason that we need the seismic is to define those, fats, those flat spots 
and stay away from these faulted areas. What's the name of that <coughs> formation? You said Ogadaga? Onondaga. There's two, there's two uh, limestones that overlie the more oh, toward the microphone Yeah, I have. Yeah. Oh, sorry. She can't, she can't hear you. That yeah. There's two limestones that uh, overlie. One overlies the Onondaga. It's called the Tully limestone, and then underneath it is the Onondaga. The Marcellus itself is kind of so soft that it doesn't actually look act as a good reflector for seismic data. So you have to take an image, get a picture of what's going on in the Tully, and then what's going on in the Onondaga, and hope that everything in between, which is Marcellus, is acting the same way. So um, there are uh, comments being made about sources and receivers. Um, a source is an energy source. It's either a vibe point or it's a shot hole. A receiver is a geophone. This is an image of a geophone. And Nobody so knows what a vibe point or a shot hole is. So we'll, we'll get into that. Right, um, <laughs> so the, the receiver uh, is essentially a microphone that we place in the ground and it listens for the seismic wave that is sent down to the subsurface. Um, this is an image that just pretty much shows you what our surveyors will do. They'll go out, they'll mark the specific locations where these geophones will be placed. Um, the crew will come through, they'll dig a very small hole and place this in the ground, cover it back up, and it'll sit there in the ground Bobby. until the, the recording crew, I I'll answer questions after, um, it's pl and it, it'll sit there until the recording crew comes through um, and is done with the project itself. So hang on a second, uh, Ethan. I, again, ladies and gentlemen, as I stated, they're going to go longer than everybody else. Uh, you want to get this information out so you are educated at least of what they're dealing with as well as the public. You will have an opportunity to ask questions. Please let them finish. Okay, yeah, we'll talk for, oh, you can't hear in the back? Yeah, Joe, can you turn up the mic just a little bit on the uh, three out front? We'll try, Mayor. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this is one of the energy sources that we use. It's called a vibe truck or a vibe sized truck. Maybe talk a little louder. Right. Okay, I'll talk. I'll speak up. So the vibe truck itself is about the size of a, of a small garbage truck, almost a box truck type size. Um, in the very center of the truck itself, as you can see there in the center of the truck, is a small plate. The plate is set down on the surface of the of the roadway, coupled to the ground, and it will generate that seismic wave. It just vibes. The vibe size. It's where you get the word vibe. It vibrates. Um, this is another image those exact same trucks from a smaller project, seismic project we completed this year. That image is taken from Penn Township right near the uh, landfill. Um, successful project. The other energy source that we will use is called a shot hole. A shot hole is a 30-foot hole that we drill with these small track drills. At the bottom of the hole is a 3.3-pound charge. It is then backfilled with those cuttings and the cuttings are allowed to settle. Um, shot holes are only placed on larger parcels that have enough setback distances already accounted for. Um, we are regulated by the DEP. Um, we are required to be at least 320 feet away from structures, from water wells, things of that nature. So that is all taken into account for. Because of those setbacks, like I said, we are only limited to larger parcels in order to even have potential shot holes. The vast, vast majority of energy sources <coughs> in the Roval will be vibe points just for feasibility. It's not even possible to even have shot holes. I have a question on the shot holes. Yes, ma'am. If and where you would put any of these, um, and would it be known when they're detonated? And if one doesn't go off, will you then be required to get it out of the ground and not leave it there? Gene, would you like to answer that? Yeah, Gene. Yeah, let Gene. Gene is off. Uh, Gene like Carpenter, uh, on, project man. manager. Mm -hmm. Please Gentlemen sign in. in. Oh. Please sign in, sir. And uh, uh, we, as Ethan said, we are regulated by the DEP on this, also by the ATF. So if <laughs> I have a charge that doesn't go out there, within 24 hours, I have to let the DEP and the ATF know. I have to fill out forms. We can either sympathetically detonate it, which is put a charge close to it, which will detonate that, or we have to remove it from the ground, which we don't want to do because that's a live explosive charge and it's not a real... Okay, I just wanted to make sure it would be addressed if it became a 
We do not leak explosives in the ground. Okay, thank you. Continue, Ethan. This is a video that was taken by Gene um, last Wednesday as part of a, another seismic project we're completing for um, Equitable in Westmoreland County. I just wanted to play through and kind of show everybody <coughs> these are the exact same trucks that we will be utilizing, exact same sound, same setup as far as um, four trucks driving kind of a caravan type setup with flagmen with traffic control in place. I apologize if the sound's not loud enough. The trucks will pull up to a specific location, they'll set their pads down there, and they will vibrate. They will be at a specific location for up to five minutes. They'll pull up the pad and they'll move on to the next location. Uh, it's as simple as that. There's no other process that goes in place. Meanwhile, traffic is driving around them with traffic control. Um, this is a much longer video. We cut it down so we can just show you exactly what goes on from station to station as the trucks are sitting there. Are they vibrating now? Yeah. They were. Well, let me ask you this, Ethan. It's another question that some have asked me. On this vibration, let's just say it was within, uh, you know, you're 320 feet from my house or whatever. I don't know what the setback is on that. Um, that's explosive, you're correct. But my bottom line is when they do the, the vibration, will it shake my house? Would it shake my windows? Would it do crack the foundation? He's thinking. <laughs> um, uh, these no. are questions that were asked. They, they will not create any damage. There could be potential, you could potentially feel the small vibration if you're out in your yard. You will not feel anything in your home. Um, Doug and Jean can attest to that for all the, the projects that they've been on. Um, we'll, we'll get into that actually as we go on. A sure, sure. There. Okay. I, if would, I jumped would, ahead, I apologize. I have to ask a question real quick. Would you can uh, compare that to like using a jackhammer around a home or something? I mean, the jackhammer would probably be generating a more uh, condensed energy source at that location. Yeah, yes, it would sir. be right there, yes, local, localized yes. rather than widespread. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on. So this is a graph that is basically demonstrating the different types of um, energy that's exerted on your home on a daily basis. And we are regulated, we monitor ourselves the type of energy that we are exerting um, and it's called uh, peak particle velocity, PPV. That's essentially a measurement of the movement or the oscillation of a particle in space and, and it's measured in inches per second. Uh, Huntley and Huntley and geokinetics will not exceed a PPV reading of 0.35 inches per second. Ethan, can you speak up? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Sorry, I apologize. You, you that, did everyone hear that? No. Nope. Nope. I did. I was, okay. I was just thinking in the back. I'm not okay. sure they heard in the back. Okay. Uh, Huntley and Huntley is not going to no, exceed thanks. a PPV of 0.35 inches per second. Um, just in comparison, what your home or structure experiences on a daily basis, uh, a wind speed of 23 miles per hour will exert a PPV reading of 2 on your home. Uh, a change in temperature of 27 degrees, which can happen in southwestern Pennsylvania pretty commonly, will exert a PPV of 8 inches per second on your home. And as I stated, Huntley and Huntley and the energy that we will be generating will not exceed 0.35 inches per second. We will have a third party monitoring called Urban Seismic that will be monitoring all the activity while we are driving down these roads. Um, this is a graph that was actually generated by Urban Seismic. Ethan, excuse me, could you go back to the other graph? I don't know if the public, uh, for the benefit of the public, if, they, if you could read across the x-axis, and what those, and you mentioned them verbally, and just mention what they are for the benefit of the public. So on the left-hand side, from left to right, you have inside humidity, uh, a temp or inside humidity change of 19% creates a PPV of roughly 2.8 on your home. Uh, outside humidity change of 35% creates a PPV of 5. Uh, an inside temperature change of 12 degrees creates a PPV of 3.2 roughly, and so on. Um, these are just things that we can compare on a regular basis that your home or structure or bridge or anything 
which is designed um, to experience these type of energy sources. And they occur daily. This graph, um, as I stated, is from Urban Seismic, the same company that will be monitoring our activity here in Monroeville. Uh, it's from our pro smaller projects that we completed in Penn Township, Plum, and Upper Borough. Um, as you can see, the purple line is a 0.35 inches per second reading. And as you can see also, the energy levels decrease significantly as you move away from the energy source. The distance is shown on the x-axis. The PPV or peak particle velocity is shown on the vertical or y-axis. This is another graph which illustrates the exact same um, scenario situation. Um, and this applies to shot holes. Uh, which have a little bit of a larger energy source. It shows the exact same thing. As you move away from that energy source, uh, the PPV decreases significantly. And we will be staying below that 0.35 line. Uh, we wanted to show you a couple examples of um, different things you might find in your home that generate energy or different um, energy sources on your home itself. Um, uh, dr dropping a, a basketball on the floor at that location creates a PPV of one inch per second. Dropping a penny from three feet on the floor would generate at that location a PPV of 0.35 inches per second. We have a monitor here to show a, a couple examples of what type of energy we're talking about and type of motion that we're talking about. So if we turn this on, you want to center that, uh, Ethan? Wherever the tape is. There you go. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so I have a quarter here. I'll drop the quarter directly on the monitor and we'll see what we have. Show where it reads on the, on the, where the readout is. <coughs> you can come up afterward if you want to demonstrate and try it yourself. And you can... It's a waste of time. It's not even close to being... That's point three seven. Folks, please wait then. You'll have your opportunity. Point three seven inches per second is the energy that was exerted by me dropping that quarter <coughs> two feet high. That's, that's what we're talking about, roughly <coughs> the type of energy that would be exerted and monitored as we're going along. So if anybody would like to come up afterward and drop any item that they have on the monitor, you can see for yourself. Um, but that's what we have right now. Thank you guys for, for your time. Thank you. And if, if, if any of you have any questions, we can take those. Wait, I have a, Joe, you want to bring up that uh, video of the uh, other Vibe trucks? Sure, Joe. Just hold it, hold it right. Uh, some of the residents in Monroeville had noticed that there were vibe trucks on Route 130 about 10 days ago. Now these trucks are depicted on our website from a brochure that Geokinetics has given us. Now these are different than the ones that uh, Ethan just showed in the previous video. Um, and these are, have, they have larger tires. Uh, and this video is about 30 seconds. I don't know if it catches it moving, but uh, I took this video for the, for the benefit of this meeting. Those trucks are, uh, they were used by a different outfit than the kinetics. And obviously they're much longer, much larger than what was shown in our, um, in our video. But nonetheless, those trucks right now are sitting there and they're vibrating right now. So that's the amount of noise that was generated from the larger units, and ours are much smaller. The, uh, most of what you hear is not necessarily the vibration of the, the energy source into the ground. Most of what you hear is engine noise. In our trucks, we use um, muffled so that the noise goes more up in the air so they don't create as much disturbance in, in the general public. I'd like to also make one point that Doug just mentioned.
the, the monitor itself is located the closest structure to the energy source, to the divide point. Um, so that's just a reference point that they utilize when, this, when Urban Seismic is doing the monitoring. Okay, anything else that you want to... the monitor that you just used? That was the monitor we just used. That's what you're, you're saying. Is that you really yeah, we cannot hear you, sir. Okay. Uh, we're going to okay. start the okay. questions. Sure. And Okay, let's get somebody up. Uh, Jay, I saw you had your hand up first, so come yeah, on up to the I'm microphone. Right. Yep, come up to the mic. Uh, you, have you have to sign in, Jay. State your name for the well, He's on the agenda. He, he's on the agenda, isn't he? I'm already on your agenda, folks. Still okay, sign in, Jay. If you haven't signed in, sign in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We need this is different. I'm okay with that. <coughs> you know, and before Jay does... Um, ask his questions. Hang on a second, Jay. I, I just want all our Monroeville residents and businesses to understand we're here to protect you and we are going to do that. Um, obviously, <coughs> there isn't anybody on this council or in this administration doesn't want clean water, clean air, and etc. So please, uh, that's why I wanted, uh, you know, Mr. Mangini and his staff to come to understand what they're doing. So, Jay, if you would, with your question. Hi, I just have a couple questions. Jay, you got to talk to the mic. Okay, I'm mic. sorry. <laughs> Monroeville has a great deal of mines. I happen to live close to one of them that used to be a mine. When you do this, are you going to affect the mines underground? Because nobody knows what happens to them. Ethan, I, or one of your staff, I guess, you're the engineer, right? <coughs> As far as mines, um, we go through a process to determine where the mines are prior to activity. Um, How do you do that, Ethan? How do you know where the mines are? We've done his historical mapping is, is pretty um, contiguous across the area. Um, the, uh, the shot holes that would be drilled, I guess that would probably be the concern. Um, and pri like I said, prior to doing our activity, those areas are mapped extensively so that we can identify where we should and should not be. So if that's the concern, there's take a, into account. There's two principal coal seams in the area. One is the Pittsburgh coal, which is closer to the surface and is mostly uh, stripped out more than mined out. Although if there are some shallow Pittsburgh mines, they're located, as an example, one is in, uh, in Murraysville, and that mine is probably 50 feet beneath the surface and then the other scene that's important is the upper freeport and in this area the upper freeport is 400 feet or so below the surface so when you start thinking about how the effects particularly with a vibe unit won't have any effect whatsoever on the coal mine but we do map out the shallow pittsburgh seam as an example so we know where those mine entrances are and how deep they are so if we're going to place a charge, we don't drill into that mine, as an example, and, and create have an effect on it. So we're, we're pretty concise, or at least try to be in what we try to accomplish. But the charges themselves are, are so small, they're not even as, like a, uh, as big as a firework <coughs> that would affect or cause any kind of uh, uh, collapse or anything to affect the mine itself. One more the question, Jay, because we're going to get other people Yeah, up. the back of the, the park across from my house, the back part of it caved in with mines. I used to walk it before you build a park. There was all kinds of holes in it. I thought when you build a park, you would probably cave it in. And actually, I think it's sinking a little bit up there right now. <coughs> that whole area... On was Tilbrook. A, You're on Tilbrook? Yes, I'm on Tilbrook. That whole area was a tremendous mine, Mr. Mayor. Okay? And there's actually a shaft that goes down under a road that's not, an un, not a borough road, but airport. But it's there. And I only have one other question. You're here doing seismic testing for the area, right? Right. What are you going to do if you find a bunch of gas in Monrova? I already have drilled a number. I think I might already have. Well, I know you wells. bid on a well in the park. No, that wasn't my company, unfortunately. We didn't. You're Huntley and Huntley, right? Yeah, we didn't do the well in the park. That was I know you didn't. I know it was Actagon, but right. you bid on it. We did bid on it, yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah, there is a lot of gas. Actually, Monroeville is a quite um, 
it's a very gassy area. It's a good area. To do so you're telling us you're going to do seismic testing. You've spent all this money to bring machines in and do all this, but you're not going to do any drilling here. No, no, because the reason that I explained was to get a picture of what goes on on the property in the southern part of Monroe. Though I need a, a picture a mile and a half. Oh, so, it. okay. So, so to get a picture over here, I need to have sources and uh, receivers here. So if you set a well up a mile away, you can still go to under my property and get the gas, am I correct? If you, theoretically, if you had the contiguous properties, but that isn't the case. Okay. I'll talk more later. Okay. Thank you very much. Next You're one. Thank you. Please come on up, sign your name, state your, uh, your address, Monroeville resident, sir. Uh, yes, sir, I am. I live on Ridgeview. And your name for the record? Uh, my name is Michael Bear. <coughs> so I have uh, a couple questions for the gentleman and a few statements for the, the uh, panel, if I can. First question I have is that you are uh, doing this mapping and you have included the southern area of Monroeville. If you have no intention on drilling into Monroeville, why are you including that area in your mapping? And I understand there's a mile and a half um, zone that you need in order to get your accurate readings. I am a science teacher, so I know a, a decent bit about this. Um, you are farther than a mile and a half into the Monroeville area at that point. So why are you even including Monroeville if you have no um, no thoughts on drilling in Monroeville? Because we have properties Wait, in... Uh, Keith, you have to oh, go, go... Stay in the center there, Keith. That way you can get... Because we have... Uh, pro no, well, not I naturally, mean, with our legacy operation in the shallow, we have... A, Excuse me, sir. Can you go in the middle? No, like in the middle of the other gentleman so that she can hear you? I can hear you. <coughs> she needs okay, to hear you. Sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. Because we have properties, and I wish um, that I had a better picture or could convey a map to you that would show you what the position is. As an example, we have wells on Conra, which is on the southern portion of Monroeville, which is an industrial area. Part of it is in Monroeville, and part of it is in North for Sales. Then we have also properties like the uh, Pick Air Monroeville Sportsman's Club and Cornerstone Television. And we have other properties that we're trying to image on that side of, uh, not in Monroeville, but right up against the Monroeville line. So the reason we need to look and have sources and receivers in Monroeville is to get a picture here. I understand that. you Your maps seem to be further than that mile and a half. Not if you look at the, if you look at the boundary of our survey, it's, it's almost exactly a mile and a half. <coughs> All right. My other question then is, if you're not planning on uh, drilling in Monroeville, are you planning on selling this data to no. companies that would? No. Okay. What guarantee do we have about that? <coughs> the other question that I, or the other statement that I have, and I'm I'm hoping the board. Um, realizes this, that dropping a penny on a table <laughs> is nowhere near analogous to what these gentlemen are doing with their seismic testing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> talking about wind and differences in barometric pressure and temperature is also nowhere near analogous to what these guys are doing. You're talking about differences in density because of the medium that you have. You have differences in the way that the energy is transferred through these mediums. The, the penny on the table is, is that. It's instant. Where they're drilling, they're, they're not they're drilling, excuse me, their seismic testing is up to five minutes. That is putting a sustained frequency through the ground in reasonable proximity to houses and other infrastructure, lines, things like that. There are things, and I'm not necessarily saying that this is something that's going to happen, but there are things such as liquefaction, where the, the vibration is set forth that the, uh, the water will start to rise up out of the ground. The ground actually starts to act very similar to a liquid. If you have loose sediments, those loose sediments will start to get the energy and act like a liquid, and you start getting structural failure because of this. So please realize that the 
what they're showing you is is bogus science compared to what they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. You want to respond to that? I'll make a statement um, about five minutes. Um, from the time a truck pulls up to a location, you have to speak a lot to from the time uh, the truck pulls up to a location to the time it moves on is five minutes. Uh, it is not vibing the entire time it is sitting there. Um, it will vibe for 12 seconds. Yes, four intervals of 12 seconds, and that is it during that time period. Mayor, I have a question. Real quick. Sure, go ahead. Did Mr. Mangini, just because you mentioned it just now, the uh, the properties that you mentioned about the Sportsman's Club and then the other one in the Industrial Park, I missed what you said it was. Are those properties that you that you said you have, do you have wells there already? Or we already have wells there. That are already drilled? Yes. Okay. So the TV station. Oh, and then the Cornerstone Ministries up on... Uh, right. Are those Marcellus or conventional? Conventional. Conventional okay, can, can you please ex <coughs> explain what the difference is between conventional and hydraulic tractor? Well, You're going to have to. Oh, that is what, that is a very good point. I don't know. Where Let's talk going. about that. No, it, where we wait, sorry, wait, guys, this is a point wait, of order. We, you know what, Mayor, we have to stay. We have to stay. We have a stenographer. Got to be able to hear you. She yeah. didn't know what your question. Okay. We don't even know what her so, question yeah, was. You, you can't talk at Citizens Night, but you just have to come up with the mic. It's a matter of she can't hear you. Can't hear you. Stenographer can't hear you. Can I do that as an extension of mine? Sure. My wife. Can I do an extension? Can you explain the difference between a conventional well, like there is at the end of Ridgeview and over in um, uh, Haymaker, the Haymaker area, and the Marcellus shales and the fracking that you well that happen on those? I actually want. I will comment to that, but I do want to say we're not here to talk about the the pluses and minuses of hydro Correct. fracking or horizontal drilling. We're here we to we address are. the size of it, but. I do have ver the difference between conventional and non-conventional is the conventionals are verticals, so they're straight down. They're about 3,000 feet deep. A conventional reservoir is uh, something that's uh, considered. Let's think about the Outer Banks as an example. You're Keith, looking you got to talk to the mic. Yeah. Sorry. Sandstone, sandstone reservoirs. So you're on the beach in, Mer in the Outer Banks. You're sitting on this. Uh, looking at a sand dune, and that's basically what a conventional reservoir that I was looking for in the subsurface. I would be looking for that sand dune, and the gas that was within that sand dune at 4,000 feet, uh, the gas that is there was generated from the Marcella shale, which is basically a shale. So you have a good analogy now, you, a sandstone reservoir, Outer Banks. Now as you move away from the Outer Banks out into the center of the ocean, you're moving away from higher wave energy and you're getting into areas where the waters are calm. And if you ever go to a, a lake and you stand on the bottom, the bottom of the lake's real mucky and soft. And that's the Marcella Shale. That's the, the depositional environment. It's not necessarily a lake. It was a shallow ocean, calm waters, very, very fine sediments, high organic content. So there was a lot of life that passed away and lived in that or lived in that and generated. And as it uh, rotted, it created a gas. And that gas was within the Marcella Shale. Uh, but either case, let's talk about fracking. I had to frack every well that I drilled in Monroeville well, on a conventional basis, too. We've been fracking wells for um, 50 years. Actually, more than that now. I mean, the fracking itself, the technology was created back in the late 40s and early 50s and used on conventional reservoirs. So just about every well in the country, including Pennsylvania, was hydrofrack. So now you're drilling into this muddy... Uh, sediment that <coughs> now is the Marcel Shale, and since it's buried so far beneath the surface, the pressure and the temperature is much greater, and it bakes that into a rock, and it bakes the organics, and the gas is created as a result of that uh, thermal maturity, is what we call it. So that gas, because it that mud is so uh, fine grained, the gas really can't escape from the shale. Um, so now you come in, you're drilling a horizontal well, which a horizontal leg is sideways, 90 degrees. You're drilling out through that shale, and you're basically doing the hydrofracking as you would on a conventional reservoir, but you're doing many stages. My conventional reservoirs, there might be three or four of them, 30 feet thick, and I do a frack job on each one. So I may put a half a million gallons of water into the vertical. 
Now, when you're doing a Marcellus well, you have a, a leg that's 5,000 feet long, and you're doing stages 200 feet apiece, so you have obviously a lot, a lot of stages, and each one of those is a mini frack job compared to the, to the conventional drilling. So it just takes a greater volume of water and sand. But it basically is the same science, the same principle. Sir, you, you had your hand up. Folks, please don't yell out. I'll give you an opportunity. Yeah, please sign in. Stay I've already me. signed in. Okay. I don't have any questions. I, I'm, I'll come to that. I have a statement I'd like to make to council. If this hey, is not hey, the appropriate you time, your name, your name I, right. I, David Morse. I'll get to that in my statement. Okay. Continue. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Morse, and my wife Penny and I reside at 3754 Evergreen Drive in the Garden City area of Monroeville. Mr. Wilson is our <laughs> council person. And before I continue my statement, I'd like to publicly thank him. He has already graciously met with Penny and me and had a discussion about these issues. I am a retired United Methodist clergyman and have lived in Monroeville since 1996 when I was assigned by our bishop to serve as the senior pastor of Monroeville United Methodist Church. When I retired in 2007, Penny and I decided to remain in Monroeville. We celebrate the ethnic, racial, cultural, and religious diversity of this community and believe that it is a great place to live. Our entire family, two children and three grandchildren, also reside here in Monroeville. I note this to underscore my own commitment to this community and to the values it offers as a place for people to live. It is for that reason that I want to address you, the political leaders of this community. I am concerned about the possibility that hydraulic extraction, often known as fracking, might be under consideration. Now, we've been told it's not, <coughs> but I would still like to continue my statement. Please. I'm aware that the practice exists throughout southwestern Pennsylvania and in adjacent communities. Both Penny and I are opposed to fracking, believe that it is a process that has been demonstrated to have long-term consequences on our environment, on our health, and has serious impact upon the infrastructure of many communities in which it has been practiced. <coughs> because of these potential long-term consequences, I believe that it is imperative that before any decision is made to engage in this, that you, the members of council, provide an opportunity for open public discussion, like you are doing tonight, and I commend you for that. And even though these gentlemen say they might not do this, this issue may arise in the future, and we want to be aware of that. Unlike some decisions that you make, which affect individual property owners and other groups in the community, this decision could potentially affect all of us. Environmental issues know no political or municipal boundaries. We share together a common environment which impacts all of us. The care for this environment, for ourselves, and for future generations is not just a political or economic issue. It is a moral and spiritual imperative, and therefore all of us ought to have a say in the decisions which affect the common space that we call our home. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Can I just tell you now to go to the mic? Oh, sure. You're going to be told in a minute. I'm getting tired of hearing Greg talk. <laughs> <laughs> Got to talk into the mic. Sorry. It's, it's the voice, Mayor. Come on. You get tired of hearing him talk every month. <laughs> uh, my name is Rick McIntyre. Uh, I live on Tilburg Road. Um, I just just a couple questions that just honestly just kind of sprung to mind. I, just, I came here to just listen, but um, first I want to thank you guys for taking your time. I want to thank the council for... For, for putting this together and obviously there were a lot of questions and hopefully everything kind of gets resolved at some point tonight. Uh, how long have you been involved with the actual the seismic testing with your company? Oh, I've done, this isn't my first project. As an example, I did, well, seis it, it, I did seismic it's testing. This is more of a direct, like you've been with seismic testing for 10 years, 20 years. I've been in the business involved in seismic testing for almost 40 years. 40 years. In that time, have you ever run across a situation where you're in the residential neighborhood, whatever kind of neighborhood, where the seismic testing has caused damage to anyone's property? No. Never once in 40 years? No. 
in all that time, have you ever run across a situation like was brought up earlier where there's a mine and you've caused any kind of mine subsidence? No. Okay. Thank you. That's one of the questions that hopefully <laughs> solves some of it. Really, um, if you don't mind me interjecting, Absolutely. Gene or, um, or Doug could probably answer that more to the effect because they have a great deal more. The, both of these gentlemen have been involved daily with seismic in many different communities in many different situations including Pennsylvania, California, Ohio, West Virginia. So, and they tell me, and, and the, one of the things that we were talking about today uh, or yesterday morning at our meeting was the amount of the vibes that they did down through communities and uh, some of the shoots that I showed on the map where they were in close proximity. So some of them, they would go and do a pre-test or t look at somebody if you're concerned. Uh, my foundation is already cracked and I want you to look at it. We would do that. But they never had to go back and inspect after they were done with the seismic because somebody called up and said that they damaged the foundation. I, I have no reason not to believe you. That's certainly reassuring, you know what I mean, for, uh, hopefully for the residents. That is for me. Um, is that a good accurate statement? Come on. <laughs> Gene Carpenter, middle project middle manager for <laughs> geokinetics again. Part of our <laughs> process to get our blasting activity permit with the DEP is identifying all of the mines in the area. I have to go onto the DEP website and identify every mine, whether it's active, whether it's rec rec under reclamation, whether it's being planned to be done and has not yet started. I have to go through all of that and identify them. If there's any mines that are still as active, I have to identify that. I have to go then to them and tell them what we're going to do about it. In this chute is, uh, in Plum, is uh, the Renton Pile. They call it the Renton Pile. That mine was just, they just finished reclamation on that in the last year. But there's still a, a water outlet on that. So we've identified where that is and that we have a, a, a plan in place which I submit to the DEP for them to approve. So, so we're addressing all of these issues. We do it on every job that we do in, in Pennsylvania, whether it's in the southwest or the northeast part of the state. But before you do any of that, you have to get, my understanding now, you have to get DEP approval, Michael. Yes, sir. You just can't willy-nilly do this. Correct. Thank you. Does that help you, Rick? It does. I, I just have one sure. one last question because I'm just trying to hit all things that are. I'm sure you've answered all of these a million times, and I, I appreciate your your, your patience. No um, you know, obviously, you're doing the seismic testing in the southern part of, Mon of Monroeville and the the perimeter, if you will, because you are looking to frack or have active fracking in the area. Okay. Okay. Th th that's the correct general. Um, what I'm getting at is. When you are in the active fracking, you know, uh, process, are you required by EPA, any regulatory body, or any kind of law to disclose what chemicals, what uh, materials you're using, you know, to, that's going into the ground? Yes, actually, we have to. <coughs> once the wells are all finished, maybe we, we've drilled them, we've cased them, we've fracked them. We have to submit not only uh, a report that shows what the casing was, what the casing size, how deep each string went, what the cement job was, and the zones that were perforated, we have to disclose everything that was in that frac treatment. As far as the, when you're down under the ground and you're obviously going yes. horizontal, whatever magic concoction you folks use to, so you can to break it up. Right now that, that all has to be legally disclosed. Right. You look okay. you could go to and, and just you don't do you use have you ever used arsenic in the process of fracking? No. Have you ever used, what are the other things on that sign, ma'am? Have you ever used radium? No. In the, <laughs> I didn't think so. But you know what, folks? You know, whoa, well, slow down. Well, we, we need to really get back to the seismic testing because right. they've right. already right. made I, I, it perfectly clear they're not fracking well, well, in Monroe. If, I'm, if I may, Mayor, it, it's, it, it leads to if they are fracking near Monroeville, the environmental impact will. Right. Well, you can possibly lead that. into Monroe. What, what is the question? 
Arsenic, uh, benzene, again, the question are we going to go through all every 500 chemicals? <laughs> if, 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 if you could, again. Now, now I, I just will tell you, yes. I, I think you can, you can knock a lot of this out by you all, you, both, you folks are in front of the same crowd in a lot of towns. You hear the same things about fracking and the fears and concerns. If you could address some of that as far as an environmental impact <coughs> of fracking on a neighboring town having a, a watershed effect on on Monroeville. If you could just touch some of the things that are often asked and just address that and I'll, First, I'll get out of the way. Let's talk about, you could go right now and there's literally six, seven thousand wells in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that have been drilled into Marcellus and fracked. No, not necessarily in this immediate area, there's wells in the northeast, there's wells in the southwest. You can go to the DEP and look at any one of those records and everything that was involved with the drilling and fracking on that particular well, no matter who the operator is, is on that report. 9,000 complaints in Butler unaccounted for through the DEP. Please, it's folks, we've got to stay. That secrecy. That's important. I'm just letting you know. The facts are different than what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Folks, uh, please, we've asked that you just, you'll have an opportunity, again, if you're a Monroeville resident. Mayor, you only give me five on. minutes, so I'm only going to use one minute for this particular question. In the meeting, I believe it was July the 11th, I'm Georgiana Woodhall. Um, Did you sign in, Georgiana? I I'm up here, here, but I didn't, yeah. I mean, I'm up they, here They want you to speak minutes. louder. Okay. Georgiana Woodhall, the 4560 Broadway Boulevard. I didn't know that they were on the agenda for the, uh, that the Cougar uh, and Geokinetics was going to speak at the last meeting or I would have been here. Um, I know that Mr. Garrett stated that, you know, we notify people by mail. If they don't respond, we notify them, we call them. If they don't respond, then we go to their door. I got nothing in the mail. I got no phone calls. I had knocking on the door, which I didn't answer. I didn't know who it was. I said, they trespassed. I have my no trespassing signs lining my property. They went next door and left a business card, talked to the neighbor next door. I immediately called my attorney and my surveyors and um, called G uh, Cougar Land, on the number on the business card, and told them, uh, I don't appreciate you trespassing on my property. I want nothing to do with your seismic testing. And um, I sent them a certified letter on June the 9th. Mr. Garrett signed for it on June the 12th. During the, his, um, during the meeting when he spoke, he stated that um, you have to measure the energy going into the house or structure. I'd like Mr. Garrett to explain why. Doug? Did you sign in, sir? I signed you. Okay. I mean, State your name for the record. My name is Doug Garrett. I uh, work with Cougar Land Services. The reason, and this was a point that I uh, talked to Ethan about a while ago, when we do the monitoring, when urban seismic monitors, they monitor the closest structure to that energy source. So we have a point of reference from, it's not that we have to measure the energy that's going into that home, it's a point of record of saying we will not exceed 0.35 inches into any structures into the uh, municipality of Monroeville. So it's documented by a third party engineering firm and in most cases uh, the talking about the penny and, and dropping the penny and such as that, uh, I'm getting off topic here and I know a lot of people laughed about that instrument. Uh, in the 2D testing that we done here and we done three of them earlier this year in three different municipalities. When we had that monitor set up at a water well or something where we were shooting a shot hole where we were 325 feet away, uh, most of the time that didn't even register as much as anything. So so we we document what we do. It's not that we are measuring the energy that we're putting in your, in your home. It's, it's a safeguard to know what we're doing and the amount of energy it's reaching to your home. Okay, I immediately yeah. called Mr. Little and when, I, when this occurred and I said, who is this company? Why are they here? They're soliciting here in Monroeville and he said, we met with them in January. Yeah. At the meeting in July, he mentioned that we met with them in February and I said, who are we? Who's we? I met with them. And I asked for a copy of their agreement because I got a copy of 
uh, probably five pages of neighborhood streets that these <coughs> individuals are, are going to be testing on. And I said, who, where is the agreement that you have? And how, who, what meeting, when was this voted on? There was absolutely no knowledge of what was happening. And I remember a few months back, Duquesne Light came in here to cut trees. And it was brought up at meeting after meeting after meeting. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I appreciate the concern, but this is much more concerning. I noticed that they had, that there were trucks parked at the McDane Golf Center, so I called Mr. Little. And he informed me, he said, those trucks don't belong to Geokinetics. They belong to a different Precision Geo, Geo Precision okay. Geophysics. Where on, in the southern area of Monroeville, what parcels of property were you going to be doing seismic testing on? We were going to be on the uh, municipal roads and state roads. Those are, okay, this okay. is state roads. Okay. So and you're done in the southern area then? No, no ma'am, we haven't even started. Oh, I see. That is not us. That wasn't us. That's, that's another company doing a 2D test. Yeah, if I, if I could address Georgianne's uh, concerns. Yeah, we met, I think it was in February, with, uh, or I met. I met with uh, uh, Doug Garrett, uh, Gene Carpenter, Benny, and... Um, Benny Comos. Benny? Benny Comos. Okay, Comos, uh, that's correct. The company, <coughs> Apex Incorporated, I don't know if, uh, Doug, I don't know if Cougar Land Services was subcontracted by Apex too. No, sir. Okay, so that company, I was as surprised when I found out that there were uh, trucks, uh, Vibe trucks, uh, down at McDane's golf course about a month ago. I didn't know anything about it. Well, lo and behold, they do not contact PennDOT. I contacted uh, Geo Precision, and I got the permits that PennDOT issues to um, Huntley & Huntley. They issue to Apex Incorporated. Um, and PennDOT told me they have no legal, meaning Geo, uh, precision or precision geophysics, they don't have any legal uh, obligation to contact the municipality. They are working within the PennDOT right away um, and they do not have to contact. And I told PennDOT, just as a courtesy, could you put on your checkbox that in the future that they would contact municipality so the municipality, the managers, the council can inform the public that they would be coming on a, on a uh, state road. So the, the, uh, just to finish, uh, Georgianne, when you contacted me, I thought it was Huntley and Huntley, and, and, and it was not. But Huntley and Huntley did make, and I don't know if that was back in May or that was in early in June, but Huntley and Huntley did make application with respect to operating within the municipality just about at the same time. So when that occurred, we went, we went public with this in, at the June agenda setting meeting. After I called you. Well, that, okay, you called After I called you well, and after <coughs> I called many other people. And, and, and that is true. But until they make application, all right, I mean, they, they met. I mean, they may not make application until January of 2018. And there's no reason to have a meeting like this unless until they make application. Once they made application is when, you know, I put it on the agenda at the June agenda setting meeting. Can All I, I know I that I've lived in this municipality a long time and I can take you back to 1991 when Atlantic Ridgefield came through here wanting to clear 40 foot right away on their pipeline. And I, I expressed <coughs> my concern to you then that because our entire back end of the property, far into the wooded area, has an eight inch gas line going through it that, that my grandparents gave right away in 1935. And it's an eight inch line. Uh, it's only 36 feet, 36 inches in the ground, pumped over a million gallons of gas every three days at 800 to 1,000 pounds of pressure per square <coughs> inch. Now I'm no scientist, but that's what I was told. This, this is an old line and I was concerned about the seismic testing coming in there because I don't know. And when people don't know, um, it, it becomes a huge problem. Sure, that, that's And I can valid, tell you sir. that um, on the side of those trucks is a, is a warning that says, I believe it says stand back 50 feet. And where they vibrated, because they've already done seismic testing in front of my home, and I don't want them doing it anywhere else here in Monroeville. Yeah. So when you tell me you don't feel the vibration, I'll tell you what. 
I immediately got on the phone and called my 92-year-old mother's cardiologist, only because she has a pacemaker, and, and I know that you can't be around electromagnetic items close to a pacemaker, and we weren't, didn't have any knowledge on the seismic testing. And they're going to be 50 feet from where these trucks rumbled in front of my house, put that vibration in my living room. I stood on a hardwood floor after I moved her to the back of the house in a wheelchair, okay? And I can tell you that I'm concerned about every neighborhood here because there's elderly people and people with equ medical equipment in their homes and we don't know. When I called the uh, surgeon's office, they, don't, they didn't know anything about seismic testing. They got in touch with uh, the, the person, the manufacturer, and they didn't think, quote, that our government would do anything that caused harm to people. But they told me, they, they said to me, why don't you take her, we can't tell you 100%, so why don't you take her out of the house while this is going on? But before I could do anything, I could hear the rumbling at the end of the block. I called Alyssa back. I said, Alyssa, please come down here. I can't leave my house. So she came and she confronted them, and we held them off overnight over till the next day. Uh, th not this company, but the other company went through there. And, you know, I can tell you that even though that garbage truck, this truck is the size of a garbage truck, it has to be capable of gathering that same information. I mean, that's the bottom line. I know my five minutes are up, and I have a lot more that I want to talk about, Mayor. Um, you tell me when, when I can do that. Um, Georgiana, can we respond to your summary? Sure. Yeah, I was just going to ask you to sure. do that. Yeah, if you'll grab a seat because we have another person sure. that's come up. Um, who's going to address uh, that? I, I, can, I can address. Um, the, the statement that we made about the energy levels and the monitoring, the 0.35, I cannot <coughs> comment on how much energy was being given off by the other companies. I do not know what standards that they are, are abiding by, but I can, I can make the statement that the energy levels that we will be exerting will not be at the levels that that company was. The same type of vibrations would not be felt by those individuals. Also, the sound is much louder on those vibe trucks due to the fact that they do not have any sound suppressing equipment on the vehicles and the smaller trucks that we have do. So also I want to I want to comment to her uh, concerns that we had a meeting back in February. I think we're not like every other company out there. The reason that we actually are, are standing here tonight to debate this issue is because we're more transparent than other companies, that, and that's our practice. We want to get in front of the municipalities like yourselves months ahead of before we start conducting operations, whether it be on private properties or on state roads, so that you're not taken back by surprise by calls from your residents. So in February, we sent out Benny Comlos and some of our representatives just to sit down and have a general discussion that we're planning this project. We want to talk to you. Do you have regulations, ordinances, and things that we need to know about ahead of time? Then we continue that dialogue throughout and ultimately end up in a public forum like this, the purpose of which is to listen to your concerns and also to educate you. Whether you believe what we say or not, that's not an issue. But we do present what we are going to do and, and how things are going to be perceived as the public is important to us. So I'm Lou Randall. I live at 1320 Knollwood Drive. I signed in. I'm nervous. I'm intimidated. I don't like to be here. I really don't like to be here. I want to know, are we going to have an ordinance uh, about seismic testing on the agenda on Tuesday night? We have one right here, ma'am, that we're going to discuss this evening. Okay. Um, city Paper today published an article. I can't say the word. I don't know if you guys saw, saw the City Paper. It's online. It's called the, uh, um, I'll call it the Poop List for Allegheny County Politicians. And Murraysville Council is on that list for um, allowing uh, seismic, or I'm sorry, fracking in Murraysville. I don't think you guys want to be on that list to start with. It was just like a weird coincidence that came weird. across my Facebook. Um, we have 1,416 people per square mile in Monroeville, which I know you know because you're emergency management, and I, mean, I know you guys know this stuff. We had a truck accident last week into a wire that closed down our neighborhood for like six hours for one truck that knocked over, right, in your neighborhood. 
we can't afford to have the possibility of seismic testing that's going to lean into fracking maybe under our houses or movement of trucks or our municipality, which is your business, and that's cool. Like, I think people are allowed to make money however they want to, not in my neighborhood, not under my house to start with. We care about our neighbors in Trafford and Murraysville and around us because it all, the watershed is all in Turtle Creek watershed. It affects us, my house, my foundation, my bike trail, my home uh, property value, all of that. So I just feel like when we see pennies drop and all that, it kind of is insulting to our intelligence. We've been looking yes. at this stuff for right. how long? We look at earthquakes in Ohio. In Oklahoma. That's real, in Oklahoma, in Texas, wherever. It just really offends me that, that this. So I write to Nick, I wrote to you and asked him for help with getting the ordinance on the books. Um, I got called a conspiracy theorist, which was upsetting. I'm like, well, what, did, what nerve did I strike to that? I'm asking for help to protect my home value. So I don't want to be called, I think I'm more of a conspiracy realist when I don't understand why you guys have been talking about this since January, why these guys get to come up and say, when we do this, when we, there's no debate. They're saying when we do this, when we're going to decide to make tests, when we're, it's a plan. There's no debate, there's no discussion. It's all when we do this. I've been doing this for 25 years. I know the people in and around, which of course you do because you're working here, but it's really upsetting to, to me as a, I feel really vulnerable. I feel like I could lose my home value, my neighborhood. I don't want to see us on the news. 1,460 people per square mile. Or we're going to let people seismic test and then maybe don't you have to horizontally drill if you're going to go, maybe you have a well anywhere, Trafford, Murraysville, uh, wherever it could be. Then don't you drill horizontally through the well? It's not like we're going to have a well pad in my backyard, but under our homes. I don't own my mineral rights, I don't think. We can't, we can't drill beneath anybody's property that doesn't give us the permission. But if we I don't own my mineral rights, can you? Yes. You can. Yes. Okay, fine. And I'm just saying that, like, I know I feel like I'm really up. I am. I'm, like, shaking. It's, I don't want to be calmed down, though. I want to see people acting ethically and protecting us. I'm not sure what the discussion will be about. Like, I see that. There is an ordinance here uh, that we're going to propose this evening, I believe, or at least. Discuss. Is it proposed tonight? Discuss. No. Why not Discuss. propose? Why can't we propose it? Well, we, we'll do that at our regular meeting. Tuesday? Yes. yes. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. So on the record, you're going to propose the ordinance on Tuesday? Yes. yes. We're, we're going, going to discuss it this evening okay. and then is that hopefully the, propose it for Tuesday. Is that the Oakmont or which one is that like modeled after? Uh, I'm sure there are other copies up there. It's very, sim very similar to both. Okay. So why are they, I mean, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, I'll stop with that for now, but I want to see people eth ethically, like we're neighbors, like poor neighbors. We see you guys all the time. We just had that big truck, that one tr little truck accident, that I have people saying like, I can't get out of my neighborhood. And I'm just thinking like, what is that going to do with emergency management later on if we have 300 trucks pulling water, whatever, from anywhere near us, or having people drilling under our houses, we don't own the mineral rights, or the parks or the new bike trail, which is awesome. That's going to increase our housing values a lot. It's a half mile from my house. It's right around the place that these guys are doing the South Monroeville seismic texting, testing. Can I ask uh, you a question? Sure. My house is about from here to the end of the parking lot of where that tractor trailer was. Mm -hmm. What's that have to do with this? Because this, because when you do fracking, there's like, I don't know how many trucks a day pulling out sand, water, moving chemicals around and that kind of stuff. If you frack, they, they pull, they use water to go in and blow up the, I'm not going to... Yeah, but I mean, that, this was a matter of a 53-foot tractor trailer. It shouldn't have been where he was. Right. But it's, uh, when I say it's a high impact kind of thing, if we impact a neighborhood, that's like, I don't even know, 500 people. It's not like we're out in cow country where one farmer who owns mineral... No, no, I mean, I understand craft. your concerns with the practice. The impact just, is big. I wasn't relating to the truck yeah. accident. Yeah, the truck, it will be a lot of truck traffic if we let people frack. I'm on Office of Saunders Station Road. If they're going to be seismic testing and then running more stuff through I think you may traffic. be speaking on our infrastructure or damage to our infrastructure, I gas lines. I think about fracking, which seismic testing leads to fracking. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. They're not going to pay these people this much money to come here and just talk about something they're not going to make money off of. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way. I know how much, you know, and I love, I love money. I like to make more. I'm a social worker, so 
<laughs> you know what, oh, folks, well. we, and I appreciate your comments, but we really do need to get, if you have questions for Ethan or, or Keith, uh, you know, and, and, and Keith, if you don't mind, Keith has a little bit of a family emergency. He's kind enough to stay. Um, so if you have questions to ask him or of Ethan, please do so. I, I hope you don't mind me saying that. No, not at all. No, uh, even after you leave, if you have questions. Write them. Yeah, you can send them to Tim and Tim can forward them. Yeah, if anybody has a question, my email is on the website. If anybody has a question subsequent to this meeting at any time, email me, and I I can I can forward them uh, to Mr. Mangini, and I can get you an answer back, or Mr. Mangini can can respond to you directly. Sir, I think it's yes. a question. State your yes, name. Did you questions. sign in? I did sign in. My name is David Mintz. I've already signed in before the meeting. Uh, I have lived in Monroeville since 1975 and currently own a house since uh, since 2003. And my wife and I are raising a four-year-old son here in Monroeville. And I want Monroeville to stay a great place to live. We agree. And I. <laughs> And I have a few questions and statements. Uh, one thing that I have been doing, I don't know if this is the right time to turn it in, but just in a few days and with no effort whatsoever, really, um, I have a lot of people, uh, Monroeville residents, who are very interested in this subject and getting that ordinance uh, in place. And so I do have uh, petitions it, yeah. with a lot of signatures. And I know other people do as well. Um, so I just, from sitting here today, I just want to uh, have a few quick, few quick sure. questions and statements. Um, Talk to the mic again, please. I really admire the people that have been speaking tonight, the pastor, fellow educators that are here tonight. Uh, and I just actually want to state, when you are going to be making presentations like this, um, as an educator, I completely agree with the other educators that spoke. Um, I think some of the things you did tonight actually raised a lot more questions than answered questions. The demonstration with the penny and the quarter on your machine. You may know what you were thinking of, but I'm going to guarantee you if I talk to people in this room, you did nothing but confuse people and insult them because it's not the same thing what you were trying to do. You may know in your mind what you were trying to do, but it was insulting and not a good educational experience. And I can tell you that for a fact. It, I can guarantee it. Um, I have a few questions that were also brought up by some of the things that were said in a, in a better way here. but. Um, when, when things are said at a meeting like this, are they legally um, binding just because they were said? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, okay. to be very honest. Okay, all right. So just really quick, I'm, I don't want to take a lot of time, but so something, a few notes. Well, you know what, I'm okay. going to have a solicitor answer. Okay, okay. But yeah, I think our solicitor should answer okay. that. Okay, all right, then, then well, a few of my questions, I'll tell you when it comes back. Well, I'll, say, I'll state something else, and I'll say that till he comes back. Uh, really quickly, uh, you know, I also obviously very much agree with the fact that if we do get confirmation from, from the solicitor that uh, either verbally or a, a written contract is, is made for Monroeville, that Huntley and Huntley, nor, neither Huntley or Huntley nor another company will do hydraulic fracturing in Monroeville based on the seismic testing, because just because it was said, well, okay, Great. let's find out. We're going to see, Robert, we yeah. need your expertise. So, quick question if, if, we're, if something is said in a meeting today, does it still have to be, is it legally binding or does it have to be uh, a legal contract with Monroeville per something like Huntley? Huntley has no intention on drilling and no other company will do the drilling that they could then, you know, they could easily give that information to any other company that may want to drill. Just because they said that's not going to happen. Is, does that have to be uh, a written legal contract? Yeah, their Robert? comments would not be legally binding. Okay, so are we going to are we going to procure that information in a legally binding way then? So I said sometimes yes. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think that's up to council as to whether they want that or not. Um, okay, but I, I want it, I want it on the record that just because it was said here today doesn't mean. Well, that's that why I said. Well, anybody, anybody, anybody can change their position on anything really that speaks here tonight. Right. That's okay. Then right I wanted to do that so. known. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention is I very much, I taught conservation education for 15 years and I don't think you really even need that kind of experience to understand that if the seismic testing is really just being done to get a better idea of our local surrounding communities, I mean the borders between our communities, whatever they may have been drawn up for years ago, are essentially arbitrary when it comes to the environment and not just the water but the air. 
yeah. the diesel engines that will be running those fra those fracking wells, the methane leaks that come out of a very high percentage of them, and I've looked into that, and there's a certain percentage that does. I have friends that do that testing across the country in Texas and Wyoming, people like that. Um, it's it's going to affect all of us. So you know. It, whether it, the drilling is done on technically, legally Monroeville land, I talked to people from Penn Township who have been fighting this for two years and said that fracking wells are being built over that brand new bike trail mm -hmm. at the bottom of Saunders Station on the other side, which is not Monroeville anymore, but that there are some being built over there that they're still in court about. But, you know, if you live on Saunders Station or if you live anywhere in Monroeville, the air pollution in Allegheny County, we have some still. It's not like it was in a lot of ways like the 1950s, but our air pollution, I, I think a lot of people know, is, is still significant. Uh, we're one of the, I have some of the worst air quality, and a lot of that comes from Ohio, and it comes from the other side of the Ohio River in Pennsylvania. So if it's happening <laughs> on the other side of Saunders Station Road, I mean, you know, if it can come from Ohio, it's... it's if if yeah. I can interrupt, I yes. think we're kind of going off. I, okay. I would like if you have... No, no, let me finish, okay. folks. Let me finish. If you have questions for these gentlemen, ask them. If you have other comments, you'll still have an opportunity sure. to address that. Again, the man... Okay. It's kind enough to take your sure. questions. So, you know, my questions, the legal questions, we'll, we'll come back to it. It's on the record. And the other questions are, it's more of a statement just for everybody to understand. So, I mean, if you do, if that's your company and that's your business and you're doing the drilling just on the other side of Monrovo in Plum, Penn Township, Trafford, Murraysville, North Huntington, those are all communities that a lot of us could stand on the edge of Monrovo and just look at, right? I mean, let alone the air, the wind blowing. Well, we have no effect on the other communities. Right. So. But if it helps them do the fracking, if, if it helps them do the fracking, so my question is, is, is this a true statement? If you do the seismic testing in Monroeville, it's helping you, as you said many times tonight, it's helping you get a better idea of the gas that's not only in Monroeville, as you said, it was a very gassy area, but uh, um, isn't that helping you potentially do fracking wells in Plum, Penn Township, Trafford, Murraysville, North Huntington that are just over our borders? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Please, just questions. Let's not give dissertations. Questions for the gentleman. You'll have opportunities to do that. I want to speak while these gentlemen are here. My name is Alyssa Beck. Um, I am representing myself here tonight as a citizen of Monroeville. Um, and I'm here to educate uh, people <coughs> because I'm here to tell another part of the story. We are asking for a seismic survey identical to Oakmont and South Fayette. We are asking for that specifically tonight, an ordinance. Seismic surveys are conducted to locate prime locations to commence drilling fracking operations. It is not a benign process. It involves the use of explosive charges, it disrupts traffic and requires seismic survey employees to enter private property. There are instances where in seismic survey crews have entered private property without the owner's permission. We have an example that Georgiana just gave, and I certainly witnessed it. I witnessed the seismic charges going in a week ago Monday that didn't look like the ones that these gentlemen demonstrated. Uh, if anybody wants to know about my experience a week ago Monday, I'll be happy to share that. The property owner is not made aware of the risks when signing a release granting access uh, that was prepared by the company's lawyer, uh, we have one of those here tonight, to protect the seismic survey company, not the homeowner. I am here speaking on behalf of homeowners and building owners in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Seismic surveys have caused property damage to structures. They have resulted in cracked and broken sewer lines and other underground infrastructure, and they have damaged private water wells. Huntley, Huntley, Huntley and Huntley has announced they intend to conduct a seismic survey in a 200 square mile area along the Allegheny Westmoreland border. This includes the municipality of Monroeville. Seismic testing is generally conducted in one of two ways. In one process, as we have said, shot holes are drilled 20 to 30 feet below the surface. Dynamite is placed into the holes and covered over. With the charge from the dynamite, sound waves are sent into the earth and the data generated by the sound waves 
being reflected off of the rock formations is then captured by geophones on the surface and sent to a central location where the data is reviewed. Another method uses thumper trucks, which we were very kindly shown here, two different kinds, um, one of which has already been used in our municipality. These trucks can, and we were not informed about that because apparently none of, none of you up here knew. These trucks contain a large plate in the center of the truck which is lowered to the ground. The weight of the truck is placed on the plate. Shock waves are then sent through the ground in order to collect data about the subsurface. While Monroeville does not have the legal ability to prohibit seismic survey, <coughs> we do have the ability and responsibility <coughs> to set forth conditions that govern seismic survey activity. This is done primarily to protect the residents of Monroeville from harm and to have a transparent process where all residents understand what is going on. I certainly called Mr. <coughs> Little a week ago Monday when I ran down to Georgiana's house and the, they were, these young men, six of them, were running along in front of Haymaker Village putting seismic uh, geophones into the earth, pressing them down with their feet. I walked over to them and I said, what are you doing? Our municipal manager at the last meeting told us there was no seismic survey uh, testing that was going to happen in the municipality in, until the fall with, these, with these, uh, this company. And Mr. Little had some homework to do at that point. The police came. They did not take a trespassing report. These gentlemen were 100% on private property. And I witnessed it, and I took photographs, which I have. But they were not this company. Everyone needs I to understand, understand that. that, that was I'm going to get to them. Okay. The borough of Monroeville should enact an ordinance governing seismic surveys in Monroeville. Sustainable Monroeville has provided the council with a copy of the South Fayette Township Seismic Survey Ordinance. And uh, the Oakmont Seismic Survey Ordinance is based 100% on that with the words uh, South Fayette removed and replaced with Oakmont. This very same ordinance was adopted by the borough of Oakmont on July 3rd, 2017 at a special meeting. The ordinance will require certain conditions to be met in order for Monroeville to issue a permit for seismic survey to occur. It includes a map designating a testing area and showing the location of all points of use and parameters for energy source levels to be used. Applicant has to acquire all location maps for water wells, hazardous waste storage, water, sewer lines, etc. A traffic control plan for any operations or testing that will impede traffic on a public right of way. Licensed engineer required to monitor and record all operations. The applicant's insurance information and a certificate of insurance naming the municipality as an additional insured. I am here, we are here to protect all of us. An escrow of $4,000 to pay for Monroeville staff, solicitor, and consultant time to process the application. Preparation of a report by borough officials showing all municipal facilities or infrastructure that may be negatively affected by the proposed exploration activity located in the testing area. A free pre and post test inspection of property within 125 feet of such testing to check for possible damage. All municipal infrastructure has to have a pre and post inspection too. And just as a side note, Penn Hills has recently passed a seismic testing, um, uh, th they will not allow seismic testing on municipal property. Penn Hills has just passed that. I would request that we do the same. Public notice two weeks, <laughs> public notice two weeks prior to issuance of any permit. This ordinance is not extraordinary. And I'm talking about the identical ordinance that Oakmont has in place that South Fayette has in place. It is not extraordinary. It is consistent with other ordinances Monroeville has enacted. For instance, flying a, of radio controlled or uncontrolled power model airplanes, rockets, or other flying objects is do, deemed to be a public nuisance and a danger to life and property and is therefore prohibited. Code section 147.1. We require a license to have any device, machine, or apparatus 
for the playing of games and amusements, including, including jukeboxes, pool tables, or kitty rides, section 155.2. It's unlawful to operate or maintain a circus or carnival in Monroeville. Section 173-1, I'm starting to feel like this is a carnival here tonight. The use of explosives, blasting agents, and detonators are controlled by Monroeville per the Municipal Fire Prevention Code, Section 198-10. It is unlawful for any solicitor or transient merchant to engage in business without first obtaining a license, Code Section 280. Uh, 282-3. A permit is required to engage in roadway occupancy within the municipality for each separate undertaking. Code section 320-42. There are many more examples of how Monroeville regulates and permits all sorts of everyday activities. For example, I have been cited, our property has been cited three times in the municipality of Monroeville for our permaculture landscape. Most recently this summer, because a thin strip of grass this wide was higher than eight inches tall. I respectfully mowed that down. But what, what's your question? I, I, I guess this, the point is, Mr. what is your Mr. question? Mr. Mayor, I am here as an individual resident of the municipality I, of Monroeville, and I that. have some more things to say, and I am not going to sit down right now. A permit is required to engage in roadway occupancy within the municipality for each separate undertaking. Code section 320-42. There are many more examples of how Monroeville regulates and permits all sorts of everyday activities. They are done to protect and enhance the public safety. There is no good reason why a seismic survey should not be similarly licensed and regulated in Monroeville. Now we get to Huntley and Huntley. I want to point out the lack of credibility on the part of Huntley and Huntley. With all due respect, they have a building here. They've been in business here since 1912. I respect that. I respect the gas that they've taken out of the ground so that I could drive my car or heat my house, which I'm changing to electric soon, but that's okay. I don't find them to be credible or trustworthy. <coughs> On May 30th, 2017, Huntley and Huntley convened a community meeting at Oakmont's borough building. The purpose of the meeting was to inform the residents of Oakmont that Huntley intended <coughs> to soon commence a seismic survey in Oakmont. According to those in attendance, Huntley's vice president and general counsel, Paul David Burke Esquire, made this announcement at that meeting. He also brought with him Huntley's seismic survey contractor to explain to residents the aspects of the seismic survey. <coughs> Huntley's proposal was not well received in Oakmont, and according to people that were there, they were less than candid about all that was involved. On July 3, 2017, the Oakmont Borough Council enacted the same seismic survey ordinance now provided to you. On July 14th, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette published a story that stated that Huntley and Huntley had decided not to conduct a seismic survey in Oakmont. I quote Huntley's comments in the Post-Gazette story. Huntley and Huntley has made the decision to forego any seismic survey work in Oakmont altogether. Company spokesman Benjamin Comlo said in an email this week, he declined to elaborate on the decision, saying any additional comment is a moot point at this time. However, shortly after the Post-Gazette's July 14th story ran, Huntley and Huntley began to set forth alternative facts. In the fracking industry-backed publication, Marcellus Drilling News, Huntley and Huntley's CEO, is this you, Keith Mangini, claimed that there was a misunderstanding. He said that Huntley and Huntley was never going to conduct seismic testing in Oakmont. Not long after that story ran, Marcellus Drilling News was contacted by Huntley and Huntley CEO, Mr. Mangini, to set the record straight. Huntley and Huntley never intended to do any seismic testing in Oakmont. According to Mangini, Oakmont is just too congested, and one could not possibly have ever designed a seismic program as such. Huntley and Huntley's land agents were making the rounds, and Oakmont was on the list for full transparency, but the company never had plans to test there. So we found it curious, and again, this is in Marcellus Drilling News, the industry, so we found it curious to run across an article in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette 
stating that Oakmont has adopted seismic testing restrictions, and because of it, Huntley and Huntley has now dropped its plans to test for testing in Oakmont, and by the way, they're going to come to Monroeville for seismic testing instead. So after Huntley and Huntley's vice president and general counsel, Paul David Burke, uh, not their land agents, told the people of Oakmont on May 30th, 2017 that they were in fact coming to Oakmont for a seismic survey, we get a different story from Mr. Mangini. Now their CEO, Keith Mangini, would have us believe that Huntley and Huntley never intended to do any seismic testing in Oakmont. This is tips for people approached by a seismic survey crew to enter your property. What if you are approached by a seismic testing company and given an agreement to allow seismic testing on your property? What should you do? If you are approached by a seismic testing company <coughs> asking for permission to do seismic testing on your land, you will normally receive a permit agreement to allow seismic testing on your property. This permit agreement is usually only one page and is usually very sparse as to protections for you, the landowner. Do not sign this permit application. Have it reviewed by an attorney. An attorney can draft a seismic testing agreement with specific protections for you, 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 all of you. You should also contact your homeowner's insurance provider to determine if this activity would be covered should something go wrong. Some of the items that need to be considered when doing seismic testing would include the following. What is your property being used for? Is there farming, livestock, or other operations going on? These must be protected. If the property is leased, the tenant's rights needs to be considered and protected. Are there buildings and or water sources on your property? If so, setbacks will need to be established and provisions made for the protection of the buildings and water sources. Will the seismic testing be done through the use of shot holes or thumper trucks? This type of seismic testing in the location needs to be established. Where is the ingress and egress to and from your property going to be? This needs to be specified. When will seismic testing occur? A date and time need to be established. An expiration date for the seismic testing should be specified. You should also receive advance <coughs> notice of the testing. Excuse me for interrupting. When the seismic testing is done, what repair or remediation of your property will need to be done? The property should be returned to the condition it was in prior to the seismic testing. What happens if damage or injury occurs as a result of the seismic testing? The seismic testing company should be insured and should indemnify you against all loss or liability. There should be an indemnification clause in your agreement with the seismic testing company. What will you be paid for allowing permission to do seismic testing on your property? Usually the amount is minuscule, $10 to $25 per acre. I heard it here, it's been $5 an acre. But it may be possible to receive more. The bottom line is that if you are approached by a seismic testing company asking for permission to do seismic testing on your property, you should contact an attorney to review and amend the seismic, <coughs> seismic testing company's agreement so that your rights are protected. Don't sell out. We are here to request a seismic test Please wrap it ordinance up. Been identical minutes. to Oakmont and South Fayette. I appreciate, I've, I've, I've I appreciate to go your over, time, and I'm looking forward to hearing the rest. Sharon needs a break. Sharon needs a break. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take about a 10-minute break to give our uh, young lady there a uh, little break with her fingers. Is that today? Now our meeting will come back into order. Before we uh, uh, allow this young lady to address council, I do want to say this. I think this council, and as well as myself as mayor, has heard you loud and clear in regards to the ordinance. Uh, and you certainly want us to adopt one. Yep. We just got this this evening, and just as we came in. I guess what the council and I as mayor are asking. What is it? I was not told that. Well, well, you just there's no reason you would be told that, that at this there, point. No, uh, that's correct. 
but l let me finish. I guess the bottom line is give us some time to digest this. I'll be honest with you. We just got it at 7 o'clock. We walked in. That's not true. I'm telling you, I've not seen the ordinance. This ordinance that proposed. I didn't see this before this evening. I didn't see it before this evening either. This was just presented to us. Uh, I would suggest you give us some time to read it and look at it. But Mr. Ratcher, who did draft the ordinance, is real s similar to South Fayette and Oakmont. Mm -hmm. It's similar to both. Now, the bottom line is give us some time to digest it. We will present it. You will have another opportunity, just like you are this evening, to make comment to us. We've heard you loud and clear. When will we see it? When we, when we present it. No, there's a method to adopting legislation, and that yeah. method is that council sees it first. Mm -hmm. Council comments on it. When <coughs> council is ready, they advertise it. That's when the public sees it. There's public input. That's the process for all legislation. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, seismic testing. Mayor, we can't hear people. Yeah, you're, yeah, let's do. But anyway, I just want everybody to know we heard you loud and clear. There is an ordinance before us, it will be presented publicly for your review and your comment before it's the final draft and voted on. Perhaps as early as Tuesday. Yes, and, and to clarify, Mayor, and, and to Mr. Uh, Ratcher's comments as well. So procedurally, we have to do a few different things here. We have to make a motion to advertise an ordinance, which we can't do tonight. It's not, this is not our voting meeting. Um, and actually, our agenda setting meeting is after the public comment, which we're in the middle of right now. So I really shouldn't even be, I should be saving this for our, you know, half hour from now. Or well, I wanted to bring this up now. Uh, well, absolutely. But what I'm saying is, so we will be, one of us has to make a motion, which I'm interested in doing that on Tuesday at the Tuesday meeting. So I would ask, and this might, be, might not be the moment for Mr. Little. If it's not, I'll do it later in my comments tonight to place the motion to advertise a seismic testing ordinance for Tuesday's meeting. We can do that. Yeah. So that yeah. way, we it's actually on our agenda that we are be seeking a motion. Okay with it? But we will have okay to. With it. We will have to place, then make that motion the at the Tuesday meeting and vote on it. We then advertise that ordinance. That's whenever the ordinance becomes public for everyone. Right. And then we would vote on it at the next month's meeting, at the, at the regular council meeting next in September. month, September. September. So we would have another round of a citizen's night, like tonight, for September, where everybody would be able to discuss this. Alyssa, you're shaking your head no, and this is the law, but this is how we have to do it. Because you're stalling there. Why won't you adopt the Oakmont ordinance tonight? We can't, this is not voting. This is not Oakmont. No, no, this is Monroe. Well, it's not a voting meeting. Oh, Oakmont is not South Bay yet. <laughs> but we can't proceed to vote. We can't vote on it tonight, and we can't vote it on Tuesday because we haven't advertised it. We don't have the. Well, look, for, for everybody else, we're just trying, folks. So please, sorry to take up the time of the citizens' night. What we're just trying to do is provide you, Mayor. With can you the explain that we are there is no seismic testing going on by Huntley and Huntley right now? That it's being done through PennDOT. Or anyone else. Or well, anyone else. We have not allowed not anyone authorized. to do any We've seismic not testing in Minerva. We well, have not we allowed uh, anyone. We cannot. Yep. Can not may I, would you address that? First of all, I believe the seismic testing was being done on 130. Is that correct, on Dr. Yeah. Georgia's yeah. house? Yeah, and, th and that is that is the state road. The state has the right to permit seismic testing. That's their property. They can permit it over our objections. Not if we have an ordinance in place. Because the state, yes, they well, the state, state can't preempts the local there, municipality. Yes. The state overrides us, Alessa. That's, that's the law. We don't make that up. Yes. We need a copy of the permit. And we can always call the I, did, I, don't, I don't know. I did not. I, I did not. I don't know if, um, if uh, Mr. Little did or not. I did certainly did. Mm -hmm. Mr. Little. For 130. I sure do. Or did you get the copy for Irwin Borough, Route 130 and 999? No, I have, I have the copy from... I have the copy from PennDOT. For the section in Monroeville. Correct. It's all, it goes through Pitcairn, Monroeville, and Trafford Barrow. I have that, that permit. Um, I have because a copy that you can take. One permit was, was not. It, one permit was for Irwin, 993, and 130 in Penn Township. 
It was the question when I called PennDOT, Georgie Ann, when I called them, when I was as surprised as anybody else, including yourself and Alyssa, when geo, uh, precision geophysics had uh, trucks parked on at McDane's. And I called them and I told them, and this was a quote, I said, if you have a permit for 993 um, and you're in precision geophysics in Monroeville, you know, that, that's on 130. And he said, no, precision geophysics has a permit for Route 130. And I said, can you send me that? And he said, yes. And he sent it to me. I have a copy. And I think these, uh, if I can. Please speak. I think these are issues that if the state mandates it, we can't stop them. Mm -hmm. So you all need to talk to the state. The same with the county. The county owns a county road. We can't stop it. But I'm telling you, and I think all councils telling you guys, that there's nothing going on in Monroeville right now. And we're going to look into an ordinance to make sure there's nothing that's going to take place. But, and again, I don't want everybody to think that we're trying to hide or anything. We have to follow the legislative process. That's all we're doing. And you'll have the opportunity again to come back once it's presented. You'll, you'll that 30 day time frame, you have plenty of time to get access to it via online. We'll certainly have copies. We'll put it up on the second floor at the uh, secretary's desk up there. Again, you'll have plenty of opportunity, but give us at least some time to review this is all we're saying. There's been no permits issued from None. Monroeville Zero. for any seismic testing. On Please our understand. roads or on our We have not Nothing. issued any permits. Zero. There. Everybody good with that? I just want to reiterate that, you know, the, the Hermel Charter says that we have to advertise these ordinances before acting on them for 30 days Sunday. so you get a chance to read them. I know you'd like to have it passed tonight. Maybe some of us would too, but the point being is so the public, more than what's in this room, have us an opportunity to read any ordinance that we're about to pass. We have to advertise it for 30 days. I thought it was 10 days. It's 30. Did we talk well, it's about that? It's 10? Yeah, it's actually 10. Uh, yeah. In our Hummel Charter, it's 10 for certain land it's, use it, conditions. It, what the thing is, is it's at least 10, and the municipality has made it a custom and procedure for third. to advertise. Because our meetings are 30 days apart. And then it also allows us to be more transparent, because that way we can discuss it at a public meeting to say, hey, we're going to advertise this ordinance. Everyone knows about it. Then there's 30 days for everybody to review it, and we vote on the next, um, at the next meeting. The borough code, I believe it's, they make you, they have you advertise between 7 and 60 days. We pick 30 because it falls in line with our, uh, our, meeting. our, our meeting. regular scheduled meetings. Please state your name. Oh, go ahead. <coughs> Can I jump in? <coughs> As I uh, told you ahead of time, I do have to drive to Philadelphia tonight to address a family emergency, but I didn't want to make an exit without... I do have one question for you, and that's why I'm up Without here. that reason. Thank so you. I didn't want to just disappear, have everybody go, he snuck out on you. <laughs> Thank My you. name is Molly Demchek. Yes, I signed in. Very good. Born and raised in Punxsutawney, no Nikki, all my life. Uh-oh. Uh, moved here in 1995. <laughs> Didn't know he was moving here either, but uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Get the gavel right. Anyhow, yeah. um, Get the gavel. I live on Monticello Drive. This is the only neighborhood that I've ever lived in, been to in town, and I'm a mail carrier, and I can tell you I have never seen it anywhere else. I'm sure there are a few, but... Our electrical lines and our telephone lines are buried underground, mm -hmm. unlike the rest of Monroeville, and our transformers are out on the streets. Mm -hmm. Can you assure me that this seismic testing is not going to affect those lines? Have you done testing in neighborhoods I'll like let, that? I'll let Gene Carpenter answer that question because he's had experience in working in neighborhoods where the lines are buried. That's a good question. <coughs> Gene Carpenter, project manager for geokinetics. We do PA1 call. We've already done the, uh, they call it uh, a complex ticket. So that's been done. We've had the first meeting uh, at my office uh, for the first... You know, you might Eastern. want to explain what PA1 call is. I'm not even everybody knows, but... PA1 call is, is the Underground Utilities Protection Company. It's called PA1 call here, OOPS in Ohio, uh, Miss Dig in Michigan. Um, every, it's in every state in the union. This is part of another thing that we do that I have to deal with <laughs> on every, every project that we do. 
We have to meet with them. We have met with them for the eastern half of the project. We have started called in to schedule it for the western <coughs> half of the project. So we, when we set up this meeting, uh, the, the utility people will come in. They will, we will show them what our proposal is, and they will show us where they have lines so that we can avoid them. Have they already started doing that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, because ma I asked because I had, excuse me, the water company has already marked the lines, and Marshall Sussman, my neighbor is here, can vouch for that, has already marked the lines on our property. We had no idea what those flags were for until we came, which means somebody was on our property already tagging stuff with neither one of us being made aware of it, either by mail, by phone call, or by a knock at the door. And while, yes, I have been out of town quite recently with my son who's played tournaments everywhere from Myrtle Beach to Cooperstown, Marsha has been home and nothing's been, been seen or done. So someone has come onto our property without our knowledge, would and I don't appreciate that when we've been told we would be notified. Number two, and this isn't so much a question, but I want to state, my brother works for the DEP. He is a mine inspector. When I told him what I just found out two days ago, which I was alerted from a Facebook post actually, about the seismic testing, no, there's going to be no fracking, he laughed for a full minute and said, if there are people down there that believe that I have a bridge, I can sell them. He knows for a fact seismic testing is actually the first step to bring in the chance for drilling and for fracking into an area. Whether Huntley and Huntley does it or not doesn't matter. You set the stage for that and you're setting us up for all the blocks to fall from there. Sunoco has just <coughs> built or got permits from the uh, Public Utility Commission to do pipelines, okay? And as soon as they got those permits, they stated now they were drilling us or they were installing a second pipeline right along with it because in all these utilities, in all their minds, it is a lot easier to ask for forgiveness after the fact than it is to ask permission to get it in the first place. And may I bring up a point? I'm in a neighborhood from last year when the electric utility came in and told me, oh, they were just going to be doing trimming and maybe taking out a few things. They took out half the trees on my property. And they were very, very covert in a lot of the stuff that they did. And my, and my stepfather is the secretary treasurer of the Punxsutawney Hunting Club in Clearfield, and he has worked with the gas companies that have come in there to frack. And he is the one that alerted me last year, and he said, starting with the electric, all the trees being taken down, he said, Molly, I'm telling you, next year you are going to see somebody coming in, and they're going to be doing things such as seismic testing, and they're going to be going around door to door asking, because the next thing that's coming through will be drilling or gas pipelines. And he is right. This is exactly what happened, and this is why we are all upset, and I, we're not blaming you guys. I'm bringing it to light that anything that these companies say, they're for profit. Mm -hmm. They are for profit for their own benefit, not ours, and they will tell us in very nice terms and give us really beautiful brochures that are all colorful and coded and everything about how wonderful this is going to. It's a win-win for everybody, and I can assure you it is not. So the reason we're all upset and we're, we're all is because we want to stop this process before it gets a chance to start. I'm a mail carrier in Penn Hills, and I know a lot of customers there, and they've gone to their meeting, and the reason they actually put in no seismic testing, they've also put in no drilling in their community is because they want to send a clear message that they do not want fracking in their municipality. So while we are talking about seismic testing here, it's because it leads to something more. Something that's going to do more damage in the end than just the little testing that might be done in our community. Because this isn't just a benign, oh, they're going to do this, but they promise they're not going to come in and drill. They're coming in for a reason. They're doing the testing for a reason or they wouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for your time. Yes, I had to. I, I wanted to thank you for letting me uh, come up tonight and at least laid the groundwork for what we were talking about. And I do want to remind everybody here, we asked, we actually implemented this meeting to be transparent and get you here to hear your comments and answer your questions. So that was what we started. We, normally, any other company could have just come in like what transpired down on 130 and just come in and, and did the work and never told you anything. So thank you. Thank you. Ethan, are you are you going to stay? Good evening. My name is Harilal Patel. I live at 100 Collingwood Place for last more than 38 years. Uh, today I am uh, representing Mandroville Interfaith <coughs> Ministry. It really echoes uh, many of our speakers before me. 
dear member of Monroeville Council, as the members of Monroeville Interface Ministerium, we are writing to Monroeville Council about issues that we believe are of great importance. One of the roles of faith and religion is to serve as a moral compass for people who have been entrusted to our care. An issue of significance today is unconventional gas mining, better known as fracking. <coughs> because of highly industrial nature of process, fracking presents several health risks that have not been addressed in necessarily detail. This operation increased pollution that can harm most specifically the youngest of our people and elderly with medical devices. The damage done to young lungs may have a lifetime of the health issues. We need to speak out about this. We need to protect our tender young and elderly <coughs> at least until conclusive evidence to the contrary is found. In addition, the primary way of assessing the possibility of profitable gas reserve is through systemic testing that requires drilling and placing explosive charges so that systemic reading can be recorded. These charges can be placed anywhere that the municipality will allow. If you do not own the mineral rights to your property, they can even be placed on it. Regardless of where they are placed, they can be real danger of damage to surrounding properties. It appears that Monroeville may be issuing permit for seismic testing. We request that the full public disclosure take place and that public hearing be established, which is being done, for input from concerned citizens. Because of moral issues of the health risk and property damage possibilities, we ask that Council exercise its proper consciousness and allow openness and public discussion in this process to safeguard the citizen and property of the municipality. Thank you. Hi, I'm only going to be less than five minutes. You'll be very That's happy. Fine. <laughs> okay. First of all, uh, state your name for the record. Oh, I'm Did you sign in, Mike? I, I'm signed in, but I'll sign in again. Oh no, you don't have to sign in again. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm hmm? if you, you don't have to sign in again. If okay. You're yeah. State your name. My name is Gloria Bennett, and um, I've been in Monroeville longer than almost everybody, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, because it makes me old. But other than that, it's a wonderful place to live. I don't even know why. We have size. I, I don't even know why seismic testing was brought up, except that uh, they got permission to do it from the DEP. Is that correct? No. Yeah, they have. They have permission to have a permit. They have no permit from Monroe. Huntley and Huntley has nothing in Monroe. Huntley Not Huntley, Huntley and Huntley. I'm talking <laughs> about Huntley. Uh, they don't have a permit at all. No. 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 They've so, made application, but they do not so, have a permit. So why are we doing all this then? Well, from a legality standpoint, I'll let Mr. Ratcher address that. I mean, I as far as why we are, quote, letting them um, from a legal perspective. Well, I thought it was because when I spoke to you that they got a permit and that was... No. They requested a that's permit. That's what we're they here. They requested, requested that That's why you're that, here. That's, that's why, why we're here. Okay. Okay. So, if we decide we don't want anything except putting an ordinance in so this doesn't happen again, do we have to do anything else beside that? Well... Council needs to pass an ordinance to regulate the activity. Right. right now, there is no ordinance to regulate the activity. Right. Well, we need so that. So, Council needs to pass the ordinance, as we've just mentioned, that that's what's going to be under consideration and, and ultimately adopted. So, nobody else should bother us if it's adopted, uh, except under these points? In well, other words, if we say you can't do this, 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 and that, uh, they don't have to approach us anymore under those conditions? Well, there's always the possibility that somebody could come into town not have a permit and try to do that. I think 
what Huntley said here tonight is, is that that's not the way they operate. Um, the, the other outfit that was in on 130, obviously, they got permission from PennDOT because it was PennDOT's roads and they didn't feel the necessity to notify Monroeville. Now there is always the possibility that somebody might come in in that same manner not mo notify Monroeville. And regardless, you know, ordinances and, or laws are pieces of paper and we really, it's incumbent upon people to follow them. When people break the law, all we can do is pursue them and try to try to get a remedy, but there's nothing to stop somebody who wants to break the law from breaking it. I'm not suggesting that anybody does, but, but that's because of that situation, that's why you need the regulation in the first place. Oh, definitely <coughs> need the regulation. But I think the regulations that we have to think about should be done in many things. You know, this is one thing, this ordinance. But I think we should look into things where we need other things to check out so we don't have to go through this whole thing. You know, this is only one part. And, uh, and also, what I'm concerned about is the DEP that gives these permits. It seems like a lot of people get permits. I was going to try and see if I could get one just to see what happens. I'm not kidding. I already have I'm contacting somebody. People sitting up here are frequently frustrated by the DEP. Oh. We have an issue with them right now that's been going on for a couple of years over timbering, over logging. And there's a disagreement about, you know, some citizens want it, some don't. The problem we have is the DEP and the state legislature has taken that away from local control. It's controlled in Harrisburg now. So, um, you, you know, you have different groups that regulate it. The state has the ability to take away a local municipality's ability to regulate things. Um, and, and that's always an issue with, with any kind of regulation. Is there anything we can do about that? I mean, can people vote against it or do you have something? Well, it, it, in cases where it occurs, I mean, obviously you can make your feelings known to your, your state representatives, but fortunately there are a lot of areas that the municipality can regulate and seismic activity is one of them. Okay, so um, I was talking uh, to Mr. Little and I asked him, um, I said I was talking to Tim Little <laughs> and I was asking him about different things and um, it seems that we can only go so far as to say areas that we don't want things to happen in. Remember? We have, as Mr. Ratcher said, we have, we have the authority to regulate seismic testing and, and a host <coughs> of other activities that occur in the, in, in the municipality, uh, development, zoning, all sorts of things. Restricting it and prohibiting it entirely is another question. That gets into a legal matter that, um, and, and again, I'll let Mr. Ratcher, you know, address that in, in the courts have, there, there's different court cases that, that say if you're trying to totally prohibit uh, seismic testing, you're probably going to, you know, run into problems. But if you can, you can restrict it as this council is going to be uh, looking at and, and deciding on, on what restrictions, you know, in guidance from the solicitor on what they can and cannot do. As Mr. Ratcher said, an ordinance is a piece of paper. And if a community adopts any kind of ordinance, irrespective of, of seismic testing, that doesn't mean that it's going to be supported by the courts. The courts, you know, can, you know, if anybody, if somebody has to challenge an ordinance uh, in, in order to see how it holds up, whether it does or not, by the courts. And seismic testing is new here in Monroeville. I mean, it's not totally new in the Commonwealth, but it's new here. Now, we could patent, no, you know, the council could pass or authorize to advertise and pass <coughs> an ordinance in September. Um, and there may be a restriction in there, I, I don't know, that Apex Incorporated, uh, Huntley & Huntley or any other gas company can say, hey, wait a second, you can't do that and they could sue us. Um, and, and, and that could go into court, just like anybody in, in the community here could sue that maybe we, we can't do that. I mean, we, we, we have to restrict it, like I think is what you're saying. Right. right. Can we so that, yeah. it's a nebulous area, and I'm not an attorney, and I'm not a judge, um, but that's kind of the long and the short of it. 
But if a big company takes a small, a, a small place and tries, you know, to demolish, demolish something in there and say, well, we win anyhow, and that's what's going to happen if they do something to a small community. So it stands to reason you'd have to go to court. And then it costs a lot of money. So, you know, so you can't fear it, but you have to control it. And that's what you guys are about to do. Right. Because exactly. we can't do it. So um, it's kind of it's kind of scary. So anyhow, have sovereign rights. Come on, folks, let's, let's stop let's yelling out of the back. It's yeah. completely inappropriate. Please stop. Okay. Well, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Microphones open. I'll be brief. <laughs> uh, Janice Olszewski. <laughs> Um, and I'm a resident of Monroeville. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Little um, concerning our website. I, about 30 minutes before I came to the meeting this evening, I checked our website again, and on there it says that if any resident is concerned or interested in learning more about seismic testing, to click here and all of a sudden appears Huntley and Huntley's advertisement for seismic testing and fracking and so on and so forth, and that you may see they indicate that, that you may see one of their surveyors on your property and it almost implies or indicates that the municipality sort of condones this or is in some way supporting this. And I don't believe that um, has, has somebody given you permission for them to advertise on our site or was this an authorization or how did this come no, about? I, I, it's, it's a um, <coughs> very concise synopsis of what Huntley and Huntley or any other gas company coming into the municipality But it certainly will, advertises for them. I wouldn't use the word advertise. I could not, if I took the brochure, I could not put the information out there. That was for the benefit of the public. <coughs> I could not write as concise with pictures. Oh, I understand that. Okay, I, as I can well appreciate that. As, as, they, as, as they did. But I because we're in a situation where they're involved with it, is it appropriate for us to do such yes, a thing? Yes, I mean, you can, you can uh, from uh, an analogy, we have um, Farino uh, paving contractors doing work for PennDOT. They're a private company. They're paving Northern Pike, Mossside Boulevard, yes. and Northern Haymaker Road. Um, I don't see any problem with putting a, um, a, a letter or, or some type of language with their letterhead on it, putting it on our website on what they are going to be doing at what it's time. It's what they're doing or going to do, but Correct. that's not the case here. I, I just had well, that, concern that about that, and I didn't think it was maybe appropriate. And uh, our, s our solicitor and counsel has not instructed me to take it, to take it down. Because mm -hmm. evidently, um, from that perspective, from a uh, uh, a um, legal perspective, and from a um, uh, instruction perspective from counsel, uh, it's there. I, th I think personally, it's very informative for the public. It's not an advertisement for Huntley. No, Huntley. but some of the implications there is we still have to think of the bundle of rights and that everybody has the right to deny them access to their property, of which the people should make their own decisions as to whether or not they permit them access to their property or not. And I don't think we should have any indication that we're supporting in something that, hey, let them come, they're welcome to come. Um, to move forward, you know, they talk about no drilling right now and that they would need larger sites or something like that. There are some larger sites that I think in Monroeville we should be concerned about, such as the airport site that you're well aware of, the old airport site. Oh. Yeah. Not not active, the old site. Uh, some of the municipal parks and around areas around the landfill and so on. Some of those sites would be larger sites that could possibly uh, enter into some type of drilling for some types of We're not testing. Allow and We're not going to allow anybody in the park. Well, no, I that's all. I hope not. <laughs> I, hope, I just want to be sure that I I would love. Thank you. I'd love to hear that. And, uh, and the nominal amount of money that they're given for these easements, it doesn't 
profit anybody to do so, typically, you know. And some of the coal seams that they're talking about, uh, working with PennDOT, as I have for many years, there are coal seams under the roadways and different things that are accessible to people and, you know, to drilling companies and all that, too. So we don't own typically mineral rights under our properties. Um, the other thing, and rapidly here, on our website it shows a map of Monroeville locating some of the areas that are in question for the seismic testing, and they show over 60 some, 60 some streets in Monroeville where they would be doing this testing and running this equipment and these, this caravan of thumper trucks down there. And the wards that are most impacted are one, two, three, five, six, and seven, of which you represent, you know, and I think that it's not just one area, and if you looked at They're not the going to thump in my ward. Good. That's <laughs> ward okay. six. And that's ward six. That's ward six, right. And that, that's what I'm trying to get across. Right. I don't feel that this council's in favor of allowing this. That's okay. I just want to be sure that we know that these wards are being affected and it's not just <coughs> the extremities of the municipality it extends into many of the wards no it does not indicate that the central business district is being affected but certainly a lot of outlying areas are and i think <coughs> we need to take action as soon as possible before and, and implement it a an ordinance uh before anything goes any further well, i think we Thank made you. that clear that that's yeah. what we're going to do Thank i mean and hey tim Hey, okay, does anybody have questions for Huntley? I mean, do you have, okay, just questions only for Huntley, then if you want to make your comments, we still have that portion. I just want to turn a petition. I'm sorry, folks, but i got to get up at work for work at 4.30 tomorrow morning. Oh, my Aaron. God, come on. <laughs> I'm a little older than I was when I first got here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I just want to echo especially what David Morris has said, why I live here. If you could state your name, sir. My name is Victor Burke. I am on the list. I live at Fieldstone Thank Drive. Thank you. Okay. I've lived Proceed, sir. 21 years. Okay. I just want to echo many of the things that I've heard tonight, so I'm not going to waste your time with repetition. But I have been following fracking for quite some time, ever since it's been going on in other parts of the country. He's right. The gentleman was right when he said, Fracking has been going on in a vertical way. Horizontal is relatively new. That's correct. And anybody that pays any attention to the news knows what happens when you do horizontal fracking. The health concerns, earthquakes that never occurred there before, we don't want that here. I don't think anyone in the council does. And I urge you to be good neighbors to our good neighbors at Penn Hills and Oakmont and adopt this ordinance. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Come on, go ahead. Grab a seat, then you're next. Yeah, he's just kind of behind. Go ahead. Bob Elms, 13. <laughs> Bob Elms, 1303 Foxborough Drive. I'm just trying to understand what what was what is going on. Um, when you do the fracking, you go down and then you take a vertical, uh, horizontal um, drill, right? Correct. Um, now, when you do f the fracking process. How far out horizontally does it go from where you drilled the, the well? If I may, just for counsel, if, if this gentleman, if you'd like to speak with me about fracking. I'm just itself. trying to understand because this is, you know, we all you're, know. You're, you're getting the well within maybe a, a mile and a half of Monroeville, you know, if the fracking affects a mile and a half, then there's no problem if it goes out. Three miles. Three miles. Then Monroeville has a problem, not that you necessarily can do anything about it in council, but, you know, as a resident, I, I really appreciate you getting an expert here, and I think this is an opportunity for us to understand our, our liability, so that's why I'm asking <coughs> the question. I mean, the fact that you're doing seismic testing, you're not doing it for the fun of it, for games. You're doing it so you can do some drilling. Correct. You, as your description said, you're looking to see where the fractures are, and you're looking for the fractures because you can't drill through those, or you, your well is no good, so you're obviously looking at this to go to do some fracking later. So I'm just asking, how far does this effect go from this well that you got? So a horizontal well that would be drilled potentially 10,000 feet, let's say. 
to horizontally. Okay. Yeah. Um, your question is how much of the subsurface is affected by the frack itself? Now, you, you've got a layer of coal. Now, you're going into this layer of coal. As I understood your picture. Correct. Now, you've got a, a hole that's going through that, that well. And I'm you're fracking. And you're trying to break out this way. Correct. How far this way, uh, perpendicular from, from that drill? Well so, um, this is, we monitored this as well. Um, the, f the fractures themselves do not exceed very far from the borehole because we are 7,000 feet under the surface and the amount of pressure that is being exerted against us uh, is so significant that those fractures do not travel or migrate very far from the borehole itself at all. Um, but that's why you put that pressure stuff in there to, to get the fractures to go further. Correct. I mean, there was a uh, you know, there was an uh, a letter about a, a well, two wells actually in February 18th um, up in, um, well, it was Hill Corp Energy Corporation, and I'm just learning about this stuff, so I'm trying to understand. In the Utica Shale New Newcastle. Yes. Now, they did two parallel wells, and that was to capture, I presume, what was in between it. And when they did that, they, they got some seismic activity and the DEP shut them down. Now, I'm just trying to find out, you know, wh what, is, what is the danger zone for getting these, these things close to each other? Could it... <laughs> the reason that that occurred didn't have anything to do with how close the wells were. It had to do with the fact that they were drilling into actually a fractured zone, um, which increased the chance for potential seismic activity. Um, and I believe the DEP is still looking into that. Yeah, they were going to put some rules in there. They created uh, 2.3 shocks on the Richter scale, Correct. but I think it was because they were doing a new drill technique. That, I mean, that's what the article said. That's correct. And the drill technique was putting two parallel. It was what they <coughs> drilled into, not the technique of, of how far apart the wells were drilled. Okay. Uh, you know, you said you monitored how far it goes from from the well. Mm -hmm. What is that? That was my original question. How far does it go? The, the, the effect, I mean, is it two feet? If it's two feet, it's not worth doing, right? No, it's, it's a couple hundred feet that it would be exerted from the portal. So you don't get any gas from any distance further than a couple hundred feet. Is that what you're saying? And we cannot determine the exact location that the gas is migrating from. I mean, this is a gas. Um, what we would do to monitor that um, is that there are certain um, chemical tracers that we can put into the fluids that are sent down hold in order to determine where they are in the subsurface. But you know how much volume of <coughs> gas you get out there and you know how much volume is in... I mean... We don't I'm know the engineer. Ex we don't know these the exact are numbers that you might not know the exact number, but you exactly. must have a better feel. You're saying after 100 feet there's no effect? I did not say that. I, the ga from I'm where the gas is migrating from? No, I'm just trying to, you know, how far is <coughs> this cracking or this effect on the substrate going? This, the statement that I made, that a couple hundred feet. A couple hundred feet and that's it? Correct. So if you don't drill your holes within a couple hundred feet of Monroeville's vertical line, it's not going to affect the underneath part of Monroeville? That's a, that's a correct statement. Okay, thank you. If I could actually just, I'm just, just trying to understand this to Bob's Come on, point. I'm sorry, you come on up. Yeah, and I'm sorry to, but, uh, so you, if you drill, you drill vertically. Correct. 7,000 feet? Or how, how far down? To the formation, yes, so roughly 7,000 feet. I mean, that's, sorry, I don't have the conversion. What's, uh, is that two miles? It's, uh, it's a mile, it's less than a mile. A mile, a mile, probably a mile and a quarter, a little mile, mile and a third. Mm -hmm. So, so you go down that far, and then to Bob's question, then horizontally, Correct. how far from that point can you go? I mean, that, that is based on your leasing position, where you're actually, where you've actually permitted the surface parcels. That determines how far in the subsurface you're able but to go. But let's say you had, you had unlimited. I mean, un unlimited. Engineering-wise, there are certain distances you're, you cannot exceed physically. I believe the longest lateral that's been drilled is roughly three and a half miles, and that was drilled okay, in Ohio. So and then you said, I believe you said nine and a half inches? No, five oh. and a half. Five, five and a half inches is the actual borehole. That would be at th that would be at that depth of seven thousand. So feet. both five and a half inches vertically, and then five and a half inches laterally. Correct. And it's then to, and then to Bob's point, then 
from that bore, five and a half inches borehole, you're getting a couple hundred feet outward from that point. Correct. Okay, well, I just want to make sure I understand, understood the... Uh, you're up, sir. Please right. state your name for the record. Thank you. My name is Dave Demchak. I live at 152 Monticello Drive. <coughs> Question I have is, they applied for a permit, correct? That's correct. Do you guys have to vote on that at a meeting, or how's that process go? And is there a possibility that you'll grant the permit before the ordinance is passed? No. Okay. No. 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 Okay. Absolutely not. Thank you. Did you sign in, sir? Thank you. Amy Bear, uh, Ridgeview Drive, Monroeville. Um, Did you sign in? No, I didn't. If you would, please. Sorry to be in repetitious, but... I should, I should have known. I should have known it was going to be asked. Um, I know it's been said like five times that I'll be quick, but I really will be quick. Uh, one of the things that I know that a lot... Ha um, and this is you have a question for me? No, no. I this is just your comment. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So this is, um, it has been said several times about asking you guys as the council to make sure you make an or ordinance for the seismic testing, but I hope that right after you do that, you start to put together an ordinance for um, anything with the, any type of hydraulic fracturing, <coughs> um, because whenever they're saying that, you know, fracking has been done since the 70s or the 50s or whatever, completely different than what's being done now. Um, and the other thing, too, is also include in that ordinance language anything that has to do with, like, a, a deep water injection well, which is what's going on over in Plum. And that is, like, this seismic testing, and I know the word seismic, um, is often, uh, we, you know, as normal lay people, we only usually hear it with earthquakes and things. Um, that's not what's causing the earthquakes in the uh, in Oklahoma and Ohio and things like that. Um, but what is is that deep water injection, deep well injection, wastewater injection well. Um, so that's something too that this seismic testing, as several people have said, can be you know lead to these other things too. But if we don't have our protection against that, they'll find another way around it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and with these two mile or three and a half miles, I know that we cannot do anything with our neighbors as far as, you know, plum and, and traffic and things like that. I totally get that. But realize that most people, if you own your land, most people do not own the gas rates under it. That's correct. So that's something <coughs> that, you know, we can't do anything about, but it's one of those things that if we say no seismic testing, and Penn Hills, which borders us in some areas, no seismic testing. And if this community and this community and this community all do that, then <laughs> it would work. Is it over yet? Nope. <laughs> we haven't even got to the, our work session. Fancy locks of it <coughs> till Brook Road. I do have a few questions and a few concerns. My property is on a coal mine. My neighbor's property on the hill, when they were digging and building, and just from the vibration of them digging and building, the coal mine caved in. Now his house is on pylons. So what's going to happen if the vibrations from this travels down through the coal mines that are there? We sit on one of the not most viable, but one of the longest coal veins and in one time the most productive coal veins in Pennsylvania, cutting right through Monroeville. What happens if the vibrations start like dominoes? Like in Butler. Does that, I know I had heard somewhere along the line that that's never happened. I think this gentleman has Nancy, said Nancy, you got to talk to the mic. Okay. I think the one gentleman had said that um, it had not happened as far as he knew. But if it does happen, there's also well water under there. What happens to the well water? Are we, are we talking hypotheticals? No. I don't want a hypothetical. No, 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 no. I'm saying your question is hypothetical if, if it were to happen. The question's hypothetical. I want a, a, a straight answer. If my house is going to fall, if there's coal mines on my property, as is most of Tilbrook, we all sit on coal mines, <coughs> the water, 
the house <coughs> value? Do I have to maybe get um, insurance? Like my friend that lives in Pitcairn has to have flood insurance. We're going to have to go that way. And if we're not talking about fracking, why are we talking about testing? That was their request initially. That's okay. why you're here, Nance. Okay. Well, I've been here so long, I just <laughs> forgot that part. Uh, <laughs> but it does seem a mute point. Why do the testing? Because I'm sure your company and every other company is not going to put that dime out there to have all these people here, all the equipment, find something <coughs> and then not do anything with it. That's my basically my question. Well, no ordinance has been passed yet. Okay. And so that's, again, I say, we said earlier, for Tuesday it'll be on the agenda. Now, is that ordinance for the testing or for the fracking? Testing. Okay. Okay. Testing. I wanted to make for make sure the chicken night didn't come before the egg here. Well, I've never figured out it's the chicken. <laughs> the egg, so, uh, okay. Sorry. Um, and uh, just just one thing for for you and for the audience here, they're talking about um, uh, the pollution from the trucks, everything like that. And their defense may be no more than that fire truck we just heard going down the street. I don't know. I sit on a gas line. A couple times a week an airplane goes over my property and follows that gas line to Philadelphia to pick up um, grass that's dying if there's a gas leak. Will anything like that be happening if, say, this does go on? Will there be a check and balance system? Regarding what in particular? My ground falling. <laughs> if 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 there if if our activity causes your home to cave in, if it can be proven mm -hmm. that it'll be cave in, we are liable. That's a simple answer. Oh, okay. But well, we have to prove it. Yeah, it can be proven. Okay. But they'll just say that it was the coal mine okay. Thank you. That's all. I just had a few questions. Thank you. Come on down. <laughs> My name is Madeline Havrilla. I live at 772 Thomas Street in Monroeville, and I did sign in. Good to see you, Madeline. Where's the mic? Am I covering it up? They can't hear me. It sounds like I'm shouting at you. Okay. Um, my name is Matt. Did you get my name? Okay. You got my name. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in Ward 1. Um, I live in Boyd Hill, where we do have coal mines. And I, my first question, this is for you and for all of you, what benefit does Monroeville derive from even having this testing done? Why? Just because you asked. I, I would like the streetlights replaced. I asked that, it doesn't happen, so why your permit <laughs> gets all of them together is a little confusing to me. What benefit do I get from you doing testing? Do you know if you own your oil and gas rights? Well, my family has lived on that property since 1939. They may. Okay. Well, um, our activity for you as a private individual could be beneficial if we were able to determine that... We're not going to let you drill. Okay. I mean, and that's, that, is your, that is your right. That is, that is your, that's your, that's your legal right. Okay. That is your legal now, right. Now, what, what, surely, what, what is What's the point? Uh, well, that is my question. What's the benefit to Monroeville to having this done at all? Why is there, I mean, I understand you're entertaining the idea of an ordinance to stop a permit or the possibility of this testing, but why is it even under discussion? As a, well, I would when like a, to know what benefit it has. for whatever, forget about size, but they could be... Just like he said, it could be a zoning issue, could be a property Putting up issue, lights. whatever. We have to address it. Oh, okay. And if it's something that is it has to affecting have the whole municipality like this is, that's okay. why we have you all come and comment. And this is all standard legislation. So there's no other benefit that you can... We, we have to listen to your comments. We have to hear their comments. This council makes a decision. Okay. 
That's fine. That was my question. You you were alluding to something different there. You were I mean, did that help you out? Well, you did. Okay. About okay. why you guys are up here, not why he's up here. Um, well, he's permit. representing his company. He's trying well, to convince us that this is. If a they're great not going to frack, why are they interested in testing? No, I think they said they're going to frack, but not here in Monroe. But not here in Monroeville. Uh, okay. But underneath, Paul. One of the time, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a couple things I'd like to ask of the council. You have said that you will consider a an ordinance, um, not the ordinance that was presented to you tonight from the with the petitions. I would like you to post that as soon as you have your writing, your written ordinance. Yeah, we have to go over it as we said. We, and I, it'll I understood get, it'll that. It'll get posted for that time period, and it'll be voted on in September. You're going to put it on the website the yeah. as soon as you have yeah. the ordinance completed. Right now. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Um, and to follow on that, I did not understand, and I'd like the, the attorney, our attorney to um, explain about we can't say no testing and we can't say no fracking. What's the reasoning behind that? Well, first because of Because we all, don't own the mineral rights? Is that what? No, no. What what I said was with respect to state no, roadways. No, actually, Mr. Little had said that, and he said you yeah, should address it. With respect to state roadways and really county roadways, they are the property owners of those roads, and so they get to make the decisions about whether or not somebody can come onto those roads and engage in the in the process. And we have limited yeah. ability to regulate that because those are higher levels of government. Remember, local governments get all of their power from the state. It comes on down. So they decide what powers we have and don't have. So typically when we're talking about a state government, more than, the, more than a county government, the way things are organized in Pennsylvania, um, you're talking about <coughs> them saying, no, no, we're not going to let you decide that. We're going to decide that. Okay, but Mr. Little said as a community we cannot say. Can you speak up, please? I can't. No, Tom, I can't. Sorry, I can't <laughs> I feel like I'm yelling. Um, <laughs> I don't want to yell at you guys. So I guess I will. Um, <laughs> I thought you said, Mr. Little, that we cannot pass an ordinance saying no testing in this municipality. Well, what I said was is that that would be challenged, okay? And nobody knows where the courts would go with that. I mean, so if we Penn Hills is, uh, can expect to be challenged on their well, testing? Well, you know, I, I don't know anything about Penn Hills' ordinance. But what I will say is that when I requested the ordinance from Oakmont Borough, their borough manager emailed it to me a couple weeks ago. And she said, keep in mind, Tim, we have not restricted seismic testing in Oakmont. We have made it more... Uh, a, a permitting process mm -hmm. that is uh, more onerous, but we have not restricted it, which I, I knew before she sent that 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 was the case. Well, they restricted it, but they didn't ban it. Right. They didn't they ban it. And that's, and that's the question, Madeline, that you're asking. Regulated. Regulated. Ban it. Regulated. And again, uh, let me qualify. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a judge. I understand um, that. But, I, I, you know, if, 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 if this council you know, with the guidance of the solicitor, if they wanted to <coughs> try to ban seismic testing, I don't know where that would go. Nobody in this room knows where that would go. Okay. okay but um, I, I don't. I, I don't think that's um, well, maybe not prudent. What that ordinance is stating, but I just wondered why that was statement was made, because I would think you'd have some leeway to do that type of thing as a municipality. But that's another. I want to point out to you my deep concerns with this is I grew up in a cancer cluster in northern Butler County from uh, strip mining. I uh, lost four <coughs> members to cancer in my family to cancer on the two mile road I lived on. In every house someone had a brain tumor, someone died from cancer. Um, it was an environmental issue. The company was long gone by the time these people were diagnosed with it and, and, suffered, and their families suffered through it. And my concern is we have an environment that we know is fragile, that we have a substance and a process that we're considering that we know is dangerous to the water that we all need. And I would hate to see Monroeville degrade itself in any way from being a good steward of this property that's been entrusted to us. 
and that you are stewards of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're signing in. Very good. You got the drill now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adrian Weiss. Um, I'm the perpetrator of the letter to the editor, the Monroeville Times Express. <laughs> I have been an environmental activist since the first Earth Day in 1970. Um, I live in Monroeville since 1983. And I appreciate all of you airing everything and letting the folks speak. What I would like to know is, how many of you, by a raise of hands, have been knowing since 1970 about the environment and the issues that were raised at that time and have been talked about forever since 1970? I wasn't born yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I knew that was All coming right. out. I could have won money on that one. <laughs> All right, since high school, you know about the environmental concerns. Ever s you know who Bill McKibben is from 350.org or Al Gore from Climate Reality Project and so forth. You know his movie's coming out tomorrow at, at Lowe's Theater. Um, how many by a raise of hands have this internal passion to preserve and protect and be good stewards of our planet? Well, like you everybody. raise your hands. I think everybody does that. Raise your hands. Raise your hands if you feel no, that not passion. Do that. That, that, come on. No, I'm not. That's, See, not uh, right. so this wants denial. Water. Everybody wants wow. clean air. I mean, I've got grandchildren that I want them to have everything as best that we can give them. In other words, I'm, and I'm here to do the, the best for the here. residents and uh, the yeah, people exactly. of Monroeville yes. and my grandchildren and my children that live in Monroeville. Right. But you won't state it tonight that... I mean, as far as raising a hand, I don't understand that portion, no. We're, we're going to state it by an ordinance, by a legal move, which is more than putting your hand but in the air. But we can't get a barometer. All these people here want a barometer of where are you on this issue. I think we've voting. made, uh, I've made my point very clear that I'm not in favor of it. You know, these guys are going to hold you hostage. Very the clear. The GEP is going to hold you hostage. Tom Wolf and all his cronies are going to hold you hostage with lawsuits and, and you're going to have to bend over and take as it. As a council up here. And we have to suffer for it. Yeah, but we can only, uh, Steve is 100% correct. We can I mean, only I, do I, what the law allows us to do. I just wanted to get a barometer reading We're proposing reading an passion. ordinance, and we're, we're going to fight this. Believe me. I don't know what more you want. Uh, I, what I needed to hear. And, okay. proced and procedurally, procedurally, too, we will be publicly voting. It's a public vote, so you yeah, will see wherever everyone votes and wherever it stands. To come back and address us again. It is, this isn't like we're trying to hide anything. Mm -hmm. You'll have, just like you do now, another opportunity. Great. I know you're here, but please try to make it brief. This is going to be the, the one quickest question of the entire night. Um, I spoke already, but I have to ask this question. The, the woman that spoke before, the woman who just spoke, I'm sorry, I don't remember if her you, name. If you could state your name um, again. Once again, my name is David Mintz. Thank you. And the woman who spoke prior to the woman who just spoke asked one question to our, to our uh, visitor here, our geologist, and said, what benefit is there to the citizens of Monroeville to do the seismic testing. Why are we doing this? And your answer, your response was, do you own the gas rights under your house? <laughs> Whether she did or not, if the answer was yes, why, why was that the response? Because it seems to me to imply that if she did, she may get some benefit. I did say that, actually. Okay, so you said, what, do you own the gas? So, so my point I being, can explain the, my the, the question is, is can, like. he, can she expect, possibly, if she chooses to, to gain some benefit from owning the gas rights under her house in Monroeville if there is no intention to do any kind of drilling that would extract gas from Monroeville, even from a neighboring community? Yes. Uh, I knocked you out. <laughs> 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 I said it was a kick, but I didn't. <laughs> this is a conspiracy. <laughs> Adjourn. Probably. <laughs> okay, folks, we're going to have to take a oh. recess. That's the emergency generator, Mom. Yeah, we'll have to wait. Hey, Tom, you know what happened? We ran out of gas. Thank <laughs> 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 you.
you know, I, Steve. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, council meeting is back in session, and I, I, I do want to say this uh, uh, again, talking to some on council. Um, a lot of the stuff is, is almost getting repetitious. We understand that you, and I don't want to deter anybody from coming up and addressing council, but if, if you're going to say you're not in favor of it or you have something, please submit your questions to Tim. We'll certainly address them. He can send them out to council. I mean, if there's something new, certainly we are willing to uh, listen. And again, this is just for your edification as well as ours. So, but go ahead, come on up. <clears throat> My name is Tom Hennings. And I said that you sign in, Tom? Yes. Okay. Yes. I have a quick technical question. I don't know if any of the. They left. They, they beat the bush. Oh, they. I'll tell you what they said. Go ahead, Tom. The, uh, the uh, Huntley made the statement that they were not going to drill in Monroeville. He did. Uh, my question is what do they consider the size of the drill site? The uh, typical Marcellus uh, site is a couple of acres, but what I would consider the test site is 10, could be as much as 10 square miles. In other words, they can sit in Plum Borough and send their pipes all the way out to the extremes of their survey area. You see, they are saying they are not drilling in Monroeville, but Correct. what exactly do they mean by that? I don't think they, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but my understanding is is that they're not going to have a pad here. Right. If that's my understanding. That's hey, what. Hey, uh, uh, come on up, sign in. This is the this is their solicitor, their attorney, if you will. You could state your name, sir. I I will. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is Paul Burke. Thank you. Um, the general counsel with Huntley and Huntley. Uh, in answer to your question, there will be, we have absolutely no plans and no intention of drilling any wells, and there will be no well pads in Monroeville. As Mr. Man as Mr. Mangini explained, there just aren't any, number one, there aren't any areas that are really yeah. accessible, number one, number one. Number two, even if there were, because of the nature of the Marcellus gas and the, the pressures that the gas comes out of the ground at, it needs to be cut into a, a, a major transmission line. And we just don't see access being available to that. So we're, it's just not going to happen as a practical matter. So now, uh, uh, let me go to the second part of your question. To, and and if, I, if I have a well pad in Plum, and if someone has leased their acreage on the edge of Monroeville, it is conceivable that there could be a well bore that would be 7,000 feet under the ground that might be under that person's land. But in order to do that, we have to have a lease. We have to have the permission from the landowner to do that. What a, but, but I take that to mean that there could be extraction of gas in Monrovia. It is, it is conceivable, yes, that there could be. There would be no, absolutely no well pads here. But it is conceivable that the, a property on the edge of the Monroeville. So Wait, folks, come on, please. We can't yell out. Uh, sorry. Yeah. And so and this thing is, I, I, and I don't know any particulars uh, at all, sir. But uh, let's say this is the edge of Monroeville here. And uh, somebody has an old farm here with, I don't know, 50 acres or something. And they lease it to us. And we had a well bore from Plum or whatever um, the na neighboring communities. That could conceivably, yes, tap that. So I think the answer to that question earlier was incorrect. No. I consider that drilling in Monrovia. Well, okay. Yeah. Uh, I have a, another question. Um, in uh, on the Monrovia website, we have this map that shows the uh, the area you would like to test. Uh, there's some uh, the color codes are missing for that. And there are some sites marked SIO 61317. They are marked in yellow. What are those sites? It looks like Glenwood Park. Uh, Park. I, I do not know. They, they are the parcels owned by the municipality. No, not entirely. Oh. No, there are other areas that would not be owned by Monroeville. Right. But it looks like they are, they are kind of. I'm wondering if they are environmental sensitive areas and so on. 
That's what Tom. That's what I was told. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, another correction. One of your representatives there talked about that they had finished with the coal mines in Plum Borough or in the northern part of Monroeville. He did not mention the Newfield mine, <coughs> which were, is an entrance in Plum Borough, but it extends up under Ridgeview Estates, Maplecrest Golf Course, part of Garden City. And next to that, we have the Renton Mine, Consolidated Mine. These are four to 600 feet down. That extends on the eastern side of Logan's Ferry Road, a number of the communities there. So he seemed to indicate, I'm finished with that, but there's a lot more to do there. There's also a shallow mine under the Maplecrest Golf Course, about 50 feet down, that extends in under the airport. Okay. I, I tried to ask him the question, he kind of waved his hands, but he indicated we have finished that work. Okay. okay. Thank you. <coughs> Chad Steubenport, resident of Minerville, already signed in. Switching topics a little bit for you guys. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk tonight about the MS4, the stormwater management fee, tax, whatever we'd like to call it today, um, that is going to be assessed or proposed. There's a draft available online on Mineral's website. Um, it talks about a annual cost of $7.5 million, correct? You want me to answer? It, is that correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, in a presentation September 2016, the school district was included in, in that presentation because we were one of the top 20 um, individuals affected by this uh, proposed tax or fee. It was stated that $2.5 million would come from the assessed fee. Is that accurate? Pretty much. Okay. So we know that one mil, right, our, our tax rate in Mineral is four mils. One mil is equivalent approximately to 2.2 mil. Is that accurate? Yes. So there's a proposed 25% increase in taxes and fees, whatever, we, again, we would like to call it. The difference between yeah, hold, a fee... Hold, hold, on, hold on, Chad. You said there's a proposed... 25% increase. So if, if, well, ho, if wait, one mil, if hold one on, mil hold gets hold up. You're talking about a stormwater management fee? Yes, sir. Council hasn't even discussed that in it, it's, a while. It was just very recently added um, to the municipal website. Uh, obviously, I'm not pulling these numbers from thin air, correct? That's news to me. The, you're, you're talking about, let, let's clear, let, well, first of all, before you go any further, Chad, um, we have on the agenda this evening, okay, what, what is a, uh, a promulgation, an advertisement for a benchmark of the MS4 program. For the benefit of the public, MS4 stands for Municipal Separate Storm Water System, okay? Now, that has nothing to do with a stormwater management fee. Okay. What I am referring okay. to All is right. the municipal, Municipality of Monroeville MS4 uh, Pollution Reduction Plan, June 29, 2016 draft, which is listed on our website for public okay. view, correct? Mm -hmm. All that information is in there. $7.5 million a year. $2.5 million is going to be assessed by way of a fee. Not necessarily. It's proposed. <laughs> Nothing's not been not proposed. That was not proposed in September 2016. Council, has, Council has discussed that. I mean, I, I, think, I think the word proposed is a little premature. Okay. So I'm not saying Council's not going to do it. I'm not saying Council is going to do it. I, you're, you're, okay. You let, are let me reframe the, my question. Well, well, let me just finish. You're giving the impression that Council is, has legislation or, or a, uh, an ordinance in, you know, about to be they're discussing, they're like we are with the seismic testing ordinance, and that's not the case. I just wanted to make the public clear on that. Very good. The school district was contacted in September 2016. That is correct. And we were told that there was, if this goes through, and actually it's in the PowerPoint that says as early as January 1st and of 2017. The council has not discussed it any further. Okay. But now, very, very recently, it's now been posted online. It leads me to believe that there's probably going to be action and a discussion on this topic. Correct? Why else would we just randomly throw it online? Uh, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compliance issue with the MS4, with the Chad, Mr. Hughes just could clarify. Chad, it's online? The, I think it's 30, 40 page document. Um, Pollution control and reduction. Yes. 
which is the Pollution Reduction Plan. Correct. Okay. Let's back up. Let's all back up. <coughs> the municipality currently operates under an MS4 permit. Tim explained to you what an MS4 permit Correct. is. Correct. We've been operating under that permit for multiple use, years. The municipality of Monroe, as well as everybody across the Commonwealth, has to apply for another permit. Mm -hmm. Part of the permit requirements is everybody across the Commonwealth has to prepare a pollution reduction plan, which is online. Correct. Okay. The DEP requires every municipality to come up with a plan of have a 10% reduction in pollutants. The DEP has given everybody the same number to use as a benchmark for their pollution reduction plan of 10%. They have to reduce by 10%, and they also tell you to use the figure of Read it up for you. This comes from the DEP because everybody had the same question. $47 per pound of Correct. sediment removed is what the DEP tells you to use. Okay. Now for the municipality of Monroeville, that comes out to $7.5 million per year. Right. Now everybody across the Commonwealth has to use the same figures. Okay. Okay. And those are all proposed. Very good. Okay. Appreciate that, Paul. So, so the, what you're looking at online is the pollution reduction plan. It is not the plan that was talked about last year. Two separate items, two separate things. We're not talking about a fee. We're just talking about something that we have to do because we have to make a new application to get a new MS4 permit. Okay. Each year, am I not correct? I'm sorry? Each year? No, no, no. The permits are good for five years. Okay. Okay, so I agree with everything that was just said. Okay. On page 8 of the document, though, it states that it would be $7.5 million a year for that's five years. That's correct. Which you just affirmed. In there, it says that this will be met by, uh, let's see here, partnerships, sponsorships, and grant funding. Correct? So $7.5 million, that's a, a large amount of money. Our, our budget's, what, $30 million. Um, the fee, whether we're going to discuss it tonight or not, whether you're going to enact it or not, it's definitely been discussed. It's definitely on the table for discussion. Maybe not at this very meeting, but it's, it's so far back as 2016, right? We've been, I've been told up here many times, that's not a tax, it's a fee. Look at Mount Lebanon, they've been doing it now for seven years almost. Um, so we're a little bit behind uh, other municipalities. But a fee has definitely been discussed. And a, a, a hefty fee, $2.5 million. Tim just attested to that. If a fee, um, so regardless if we're going to pass or not, I'm not sit, sitting up here saying it's going to be passed, but I am sitting up here telling you if we do pass a fee like that, that is going to, you know, Greg, I'll, I'll read actually, I think you said it best, um, what it would do to a community. So on your Facebook page in May of 2014, you said to all my friends on Facebook who know people that live in Monroeville, please resend this message to everyone on your friend list. I'm asking you all to please vote no on the Monroeville Library tax. The reasons being, um, let's see here, this tax surely will hurt our seniors who are on fixed incomes. Um, this tax will hurt all of our working families who are having a hard time just to make ends meet. If a family wanted to either buy or sell a home in Monroeville, this tax would hinder them as well. This tax is also a job and business killer, as I have spoken to many business owners who may either have to downsize their business or leave Monroeville. Any new business would pass or even consider moving into or pass on moving into Monroeville since this tax would bring the total millage rate up to five mills. As a supporter of the library, please vote no and let your independent voters know they can vote as well. So I think you very, very accurately describe what crippling effects could be if the millage rate was raised to four or was raised from four to five being that, you know, we started at 1.8 before the, the reassessment. So we went from 1.8 to 4, and then you decide, very accurately, I believe, depicted what could happen if, if the millage rate went up to 5. All I'm here is tonight to say is, please very, very strongly consider looking at an alternative method. Because we can debate whether it's a fee, whether it's a tax, right? The, the difference is, if it's a fee, everyone is assessed the fee. So we're not just getting taxed once now, we're getting taxed five times, right? The individuals, property owners are getting taxed. The mall is paying $179,000. So cost of goods is going to go up because rent's going to go up, and they're already at like 40% vacancy. So it's not good for business. But cost of goods is going to go up. So that's well, a what do you suggest? Oh, let me finish, please. The municipality themselves, you guys, are being assessed, uh, uh, at least in 2016, $82,000.
you guys don't print money, right? You get money from the taxpayers. So, of course, we either cut services or we raise taxes like we've done previously. Um, and then, fifth, our places of worship have to pay into this, right? And that, um, in the presentation, North American Martyrs was uh, stated at $7,296. So that's more money that people have to take out of their coffers and put into the churches in order to pay for the, this fee. What's your point, Chad, on this? My point is, this is more detrimental than a one mil tax increase. This is $2.5 million when one mil is 2.2. So you very accurately describe what happens when you raise the millage rate up to five, which I completely agree with you. Mount Lebanon, who, you know, Ron, you've told me before, look at Mount Lebanon, they have a great website, explains it very, very well. They've been doing this for going on seven years now. So we're kicking the can down the road. Now we're saying it's not even up for discussion. We're just going to post it online randomly, and we're not going to discuss how we're going to pay no, there's, for there's implementing the program. I understand there's numerous ways to take care of the federal mandate. There's been boroughs that have been fined already over $300,000 for not staying up to date on this mandate. What you heard there in one of, one of our presentations, <coughs> as you so accurately read, was one of the ideas, Mount Levin's doesn't mean that's the end of the deal. That was one of the exactly. ideas. Exactly, and that's why I'm here today to, to urge you guys to look at other options available. We well, I, th I think we did do that. You know, we, we've had some discussion on different, you know, venues. We've had meetings. But we've had public meetings. What you have to understand is that is, that's okay. a state and federal mandate. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not debating the mandate. I, trust me, I understand. The, the school district, the municipalities, government, the process board. But where do you see what the Jack? DEP does to your SOAR bills I, in I, the near oh. future? I'm well aware. All I'm asking you to do is reconsider this blanket fee that is going to affect our churches, that is going to affect the mall. I mean, the, the mall, you guys all have been to the mall, um, you know, in the past year or so. It's definitely not what it was five well, you years ago. You know what that fee is? Look how much rainwater comes off the mall into our stormwater. We have to pay for that. They don't pay for that. The residents, the taxpayers all pay for that. A lot of when all their stormwater comes off the mall, comes off uh, Gateway High School, and comes off Minerva Number no. Five Fire Company, the, the taxpayers pay for those lots. And yep. the feds are saying enough is enough. Everybody, time for everybody to end. I agree. Up. And there's there's great information in that proposal. There's information right now. We do street right. sweeping twice a year. Right, the city does it twice a week, and this proposal is to do it. I think 24 times a year, if I remember accurately. So there's other ways to look at reducing. Um, the, the waste that goes into the storm water management. All I'm asking is that you guys please what consider. Are the ways? I mean, you seem to know. Well, tell us. Uh, any, we're walking. Greg, any, any proposal I've brought to this council has, has fallen upon deaf ears. I, I think that is well documented and well true. noted. That's not true, Chad. I think our. Uh, we we'll just intervene there on the street sweeping thing. I mean, that's twice a year in the fall and, and after the winter use. But it, that, that machine runs practically daily. I'm, I'm just, just so you off understand, off you know. Yep. I mean that that's that's for the fall leaves and I, I appreciate your time. I just hope that you guys reconsider and look into that. Thank you. And the microphone is open. Uh, I, Alyssa Beck, Sustainable Monroeville. I can't resist responding to your question, which is, what do you suggest? So. If, for example, we had an ordinance in the municipality of Monroeville that required the mall to put on a green roof and permeable pavement in their parking lots, there would be no runoff and we wouldn't have to deal with that issue. I, I'm learning about this tonight, 7.5 million. Um, if you hire a, a permaculture consultant for a very minimal amount of money, you can implement uh, through ordinances all kinds of permaculture solutions that will cost a fraction of 7.5 million. That's all I want to say about that. If I could comment on that, and this, well, this is a question for Mr. Hugus to Dr. Beck's point. Could the mall or any business or any nonprofit that has non permeable surface, could they create permeable surface and be um, impacted differently? To, to her point, as far as saying. The pollution reduction plan is generally looked at as the municipality, not to private owners. That's what we have to do as a municipality. So we, you know, for example, we own 32 detention basins. It's, it's doing some improvements to those to help reduce the amount of sediments. It's, uh, it's doing, I mean, we, and I agree with Stephen, we do street sweeping now, but we need to do, we could do more but to take credit for it that way. There's other options, there's other best management practices that we could do. Are I mean, those to, to, excuse me, I'm talking. 
Or those bio are swales? The, the yes, bio retention talking, ponds? I'm still trying to listen to Mr. Hughes. I think it'll be very difficult for the municipality to make um, commercial businesses put on green roofs. I mean, it's very costly to do that. I understand the end effect of it, but it's very costly to do it. No, but if a private business chose to do that, mm -hmm. could they possibly get a take credit? credit take credit for it? That's the question I had. I don't know if it would do through, Jamie, through the PRP. We can't take credit. Anything that municipality... Microphone. you got to get to the microphone. You know better than that. <laughs> I'll leave it on this. I was a member of the crowd tonight. Uh, anything that the municipality makes a private developer do that is not already required by state law, the municipality can take credit for that as part of their pollutant reduction. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, yes, we can use private development as a tool to meet our obligations. The problem is DEP wants you to put this pollutant reduction plan together and you have no certainty over what's going to happen in the future with private development, so you don't essentially have to plan for it not happening and then we can take credit for it as it happens. Sorry. Yeah, I'm Stanley Beck. I thought when I came up here I'd be able to say something without, without being interrupted by my wife. But she, there was another microphone over there. <coughs> what? Where do I sign? You're going to be sleeping on a couch tonight. <laughs> Don't help. Poor guy. All right, first of all, <coughs> I just want to follow up um, mm -hmm. on uh, this stormwater management thing. And that is uh, that we've uh, implemented some things that, uh, around our house since we moved in in 1993. And I think it's time, and my wife has been preaching this stuff all along with her group, Sustainable Monroeville. It's time uh, for the municipality to realize that some of these are good ideas. So we have a rain barrel on one downspout. <coughs> the Nine Mile Run Watershed Association, that you might know of, it's in the eastern uh, part of the city. Um, helps with rain barrels. If there were a rain barrel on every downspout in Monroeville, it would really improve this our might surprise you, but Mount Lebanon has a discount for a rain barrel. There you go. The one time there you go. The okay, that's one idea. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a permaculture landscape. So we do get cited for it occasionally, but I think things need to change. And er if everyone had a landscape the, the, the way we did, it would absorb a lot of water, I can mm -hmm. guarantee you. There's something called pervious payment. We, uh, someone mentioned it. Uh, green roofs is an idea. So every business, if every business in Monroeville had a green roof, they're doing that in Pittsburgh. They're doing that. <laughs> it's cutting edge. Yes. Green roofs absorb the water, and it grows plants. It helps with uh, heating and cooling, and uh, it reduces costs. And it, uh, there's a lot of solutions that really we could implement to, uh, for the stormwater management. Okay, so just I just wanted to start with that. I have some petitions that I want to uh, submit them in. To yes. This is on the. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. That's on the. Um, seismic testing. Seismic testing ordinance, yes. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to ask Mr. Ratcher to check into one thing. You might not know the answer now, but we've been having a discussion in the back of the room a little bit, and I th I'm pretty sure that if we enact an ordinance, no matter what PennDOT allows to be done on the roads, I think they that activity still has to comply with our ordinance. So that no, might be something that you need to check. I don't believe that to be the case. Okay, well, we'll do some checking on that. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask, <clears throat> and maybe this is, maybe I don't need to ask this question, but I want to anyway to make sure that each individual council person, plus the mayor, plus the municipal manager, plus a legal council, don't have any kind of conflict Someone asked a question about, you know, what does Monroeville have to gain? So I want to make sure that each person answers this question, and that is that you don't have any conflict of interest that would influence you to um, act against the interest of the citizens of Monroeville in connection with oil and gas or any business that's related to that. Is that something that you would be willing to answer now? Just so what you know, you if, if there was a conflict by anybody up here, you'd including have to, myself, you'd have to, you have to be recused. You, yeah, recu recu you would have had to done that already. 100%. That's okay, law. Okay. You get in big trouble if you don't. Okay. <laughs> big All right. trouble. All right. Thank you. We got the pastor. He's coming up. He, he is you, Mayor. <laughs> I missed you, Mayor. Rob Barrow, 2155 Pendleton. 
just have a question on this. What is this? The MS4 pollution reduction. We're talking about seven and a half million dollars each year, right? Is that a firm number? Is that the estimated number? That was a figure that was given to us by DEP. Right. So everybody across the Commonwealth would use the same figure when they were figuring out their pollution plan. But that's so not that's a firm budget figure. number, right? No. So that no. can So it can be whatever. The main point is to reduce it by 10 percent. That's correct. The you're set, you have to reduce your sediments by 10 percent. However we do that. That's right. That is correct. And so we're the very money, different. That's we, the big question. The municipality is sort of in... Yes, sir. Ahead of the curve here because we have some lands and areas to do that. Right. There's other communities that are asphalt and rooftops. They have no green space, so they're in a bigger problem than we are. Okay. Because I'm just thinking, if you'd like to take that seven and a half million dollars, I'll be happy to put in a permaculture grounds and a roof. I'll well, we was kind of hoping, Pastor, you'd help us pay for that. You know, I mean. That's what I'm trying to <laughs> look against, Greg. I mean, I love you, buddy, but not that much. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you very much. Thank you. Microphones open, folks. Hi, my name is Jeanette Beagle. I signed in somewhere a long time ago. Um, I have something that I'd like to just kind of bring to your attention and the police chief is not here so I was kind of hoping he might be here to hear I this. Think he might be in the hallway. Okay. Um, not anymore. Uh, oh, you know, no. I'm, an, okay, never mind. I'm there. an administrator for the Monroeville Community still Cares there. page. Oh, he's still there. Right. Here he comes. And here comes Doug. See, he heard his name. He allowed to speak. <laughs> Last year we went through everything with getting our school zone, designated the school zone, the crossing guard, all that good happy stuff. We are getting a lot of residents in that area posting to our page about people not stopping at the stop signs, the speeding. Some lady's dog was hit by a car the other night, but the dog apparently is okay. It is not just people passing through, but the residents of University Park also. Air. I mean, it, it is everybody. So one, I'd like to just remind everybody, you're driving through residential communities. There are kids. We don't have a whole heck of a lot of sidewalks. There are speed limits, there are stop signs, and the ones with white borders are not optional. I don't know what we can do traffic-wise to try to get this curb because school will be starting soon. This is in every neighborhood. I know. I think it's we all get calls about this all the time. Uh, you know, what are signs, children at play, um, you know, your speed limit signs, and it's our residents are doing it. Right. I, uh, you well, cannot I'm put in asking speed. the residents to plead, you know, we I, need to pay attention to this, and I understand, and but I, cause I, I think it's to a point, a lot. yes, I think it's a great page, and thank you for it. And I think it's to a point now where tickets need to be issued, and people need to be, oh, okay, I'm not going to stop, but it's, I don't want to see somebody's child hit, and I don't know what, as a police department, what we do, is this something that a traffic division coming back would do, is this, I mean, what, Just where so do we go know, here? every officer out there in a car is part of the traffic division as well as patrol side. So That's the radar bill. Yeah. That, I agree with that. Okay, um, well, get us the information. I mean, whoever we got to put heat on to get this done, it's just like, you know, we have kids and... are in favor of, but, you know... We're but in the meantime, what are we... Well, I had a guy come the other day that someone ran over his kid's toy on the street. They, the kids jumped out of the way. Yeah, I mean, it's... So. <laughs> right now, under the, municipal, under the vehicle code, the municipal police officers it would be a very difficult and antiquated time timing vehicles by themselves. In other words, it takes a group of them. I uh, grasp that. Yeah, uh, three chase cars, one because they're hardwired to the device or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. If and when Pennsylvania ever catches up with the rest of the country and passes the radar bill, a police officer could stop when he has a slow moment and run radar in your neighborhood, take a call and come back. Right now, it is a big detail to do that. That's a, and I half understand. The time the cars that. know you're there. But the stop signs, we do, we do the best we can. Yeah, I mean, I do. And I, we, I belong to the Park Swim Club, so I'm driving from Royal Oaks and coming up College Park, and I'm amazed at even <coughs> College Park and Noel. Well, the knots. The the I'm like, they I don't go through that stop it. sign like it's not even there. Yeah, so it's. And we've not, issued tickets there, but they still go through it. Okay, we just wanted to bring, you know. But we always make that announcement with the kids, and, I, and again, this is a great time because we're getting close. Yeah, we are. Thank okay, you. thank you. Yeah. Once again, folks, the microphone is open. 
Move that on. portion of the meeting will close, and now we'll go to our work session. <laughs> Can we expedite this uh, work session portion? We, I'll second. Be the best I can. <laughs> I second that <laughs> because I, I do have to be getting out of here shortly. Mayor, if I could, real quick, Let's and roll, uh, please, and to Mr. Little, just to get this out of the way, I would like to have. Uh, a motion to advertise a seismic testing ordinance placed on Tuesday's agenda. Is there a second? Second. Wait, wait, wait. Aye. Aye. Everybody Aye. good just with it? Just Aye. 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 Just back. Aye. Everybody Aye. good Aye. with it? No, we're, we're just instructing, just to make sure that's on the agenda. You said it's already, already be there. Very uh, good. Uh, Mr. Little, can we also put on the agenda of no seismic testing in our parks? I will. Uh, we need a review of the whole thing. Municipal yeah. property. A municipal property. Municipal uh, property. Well, if it's not written in the ordinance, ordinance, I wanted to make sure that it is okay. available as well. Okay. Um, we're gonna. Uh, will Jamie do the MS4 on Tuesday? Great idea. We ain't doing it today. All right. <laughs> All right, Council, looking at the Citizens' Night meeting of July 11th, 2017. Do we have time for that? I mean, well, the problem is we had publicly advertised it for we tonight. We have to do it tonight. Is it for tonight or for Tuesday? No, for Tuesday. tonight. Jamie, come on down. You're killing me. Never mind. He's not sitting there for a no. I thought he was. Because he's having fun. Very <laughs> <laughs> nice, Jamie. Picked a great night, Jamie. <laughs> We're going to make this quick. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that all night. I heard that, I heard that all <laughs> night. <laughs> so we've already kind of talked about a lot of this. So we have a... a we we didn't of, know that the crowd was going to be so large when we... When you picked the date. ...established this thing. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's get him. Let the man start. <laughs> so we have an MS4 permit that expires in uh, April of next year. So we have to file a notice of intent to get a new permit, essentially. And part of that requirement is this PRP pollutant reduction plan. That's a new requirement from DEP. You have to have 30, at least 30 days of public comment and then assimilate those public comments back into the document. And one of the things you're required to do is have a public meeting about it. So it was advertised in the paper on July 17th, um, listed on our website. A couple people have discussed it tonight. Anybody at home can go look on the website, take a look at it, submit <coughs> comments to us. And uh, basically, it's as simple as Paul talked about earlier. The EP gives you a formula. You come up with how much sediment, theoretically, based on the formula, comes off of property within Monroeville over the course of a year. You're required at the end of your five-year term to reduce that by 10%. So the pollutant reduction plan is basically a, a plan for how that's going to be accomplished. And there's a price tag associated with it. Once again, like Paul said, it's the DEP formula that they give you. So that's pretty much the that that's it in a nutshell. So if anybody wants to look at the website, the plan is on there. Submit comment to us. It should be a living document. It's going to change over time as projects are completed and uh, maybe goals change or things like that. So it will evolve over time. Um, there were a couple of questions about permaculture and green roofs and things like that. Probably because it's put together by a bunch of engineers at DEP. There are kind of strict guidelines on what sort of projects you can have and what sort of uh, reduction in sediment you can have for those projects. So permaculture, although a good thing, isn't listed in there as something that we could take credit for. So you're limited in, in the menu of projects that you have available. So, yeah. so that's what we've gone with. That might evolve over time. These are new regulations. DEP is constantly updating their website on the rules that we're supposed to be following, so it's kind of an iterative process where we're all learning together. So well, we're Jamie, keeping up with our end. Yeah, right? Jamie and I have attended many classes, updates on this whole thing. We all leave with more questions than answers, and the people sitting in the audience with us is the DEP. <laughs> so we're all learning together, and I hate to say that, but it's the truth. Um, you know, it's uh, but they gave us some strict guidelines that we have to follow, and that's where we're at. That's why we're here. So that's Thank nuts you. and bolts. I told you I'd keep it short and sweet. Thank you. End of hearing. Great job. Thank you, folks. <laughs> okay, council, going over to the uh, minutes of citizens night meeting of July 11, 2017 and the regular council meeting of July 11, 2017. Are there any additions or corrections? Nope. No, sir. Okay, moving over to our uh, reports of our tax collections. 
any additions or corrections? None. None. Concerning the payroll report, once again, any additions yes, or corrections? List of bills and budget transfers. Linda, you're up first. Nothing, sir. Nick. No questions, Mayor. Ron. Nothing. No, sir. And Steve. Nothing. Oh, I forgot to mention, both uh, Jim and Tom, they had issues that they had to leave. They do apologize, and I apologize for not saying that um, earlier. Uh, moving over to the old business, uh, Tim, if you would, please. Okay, uh, number one is a, an applicant requesting a rezoning, uh, James A. Rudder, uh, 40, 41, or uh, 41.852 acres, uh, which is uh, from S Conservancy to C2 Business Commercial. The properties are located at 4917 Old Penn Highway, known as Allegheny Lot and Block Number 1244-F365 and 1244-C287, and owned by James and Janet Rudder. This would have been a public hearing. However, the applicant has withdrawn his application. If you would go to new business. Too. Okay, new business is uh, Center Road Plaza. Applicant is, is requesting a preliminary and final subdivision approval to consolidate three parcels located along Center Road. The parcels are known as tax parcels 743H174, 743H179, and 743H181 in the C2 Business Commercial District. The Planning Commission recommends approval of this ap application. Any questions, Council, for on this application? Sure, there's a gentleman up at the point. Oh, okay. Signing in. Take your time. <laughs> this is across from the Northern United Methodist. Is that what you're talking about? He has a very long last name, so yeah. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's been very long. <laughs> except, for, except for Jamie. He could have wrote Jones and it would have felt long. <laughs> well, I saw the picture. I saw the First item before you is the subdivision you that is on the agenda. Name, and uh, sir, the can you state your name, please? I'm sorry, Greg Corniotis. Thank I'm you. with RF Michael and Associates. The unification plan that is uh, before you is three separate parcels. It was the uh, shopping plaza as a separate parcel, and then there's two other parcels along Kenmar. The shopping plaza is the existing plaza? That is correct. Thank you. Greg, start with where you're at. Okay. What, we're talking, what plaza are we talking about? That's the Center Road Plaza. Okay. Because I don't think they realize it. It was our, up on that Thanks, Okay. So the intent is for the plaza property and the other two properties along Kenmore to be united as one. And that will take us on to the next pro uh, item on the agenda for the purpose Continue. of that. Continue. Okay. And then we'll ask any questions from We're trying to do this expedition. <laughs> He's going, no kid. No, I'm trying to figure out about the He sat in the back row for six hours, <laughs> too. He knows. <laughs> I was fine. I was fine. So the intent of the uh, site plan is to put an addition, a two story office building on the existing uh, shopping plaza. There will be two entrances, one along Kenmar, which would have restricted access leaving the site. And then if you're familiar with the plaza itself, the whole area in the front is basically all open. What we're going to do in this case is restrict access so that there's more controlled uh, access in, to, and from the property. Uh, what we're proposing here as well is underground detention systems to be able to hold the storm water and uh, comply with the BMP requirements for the site as well. Questions, Council? Parking. Parking? Parking is an issue now with that. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, currently, um, I did have that on here. Um, we have 20 three actual spaces provided. There's 28 required. 
with the addition to the property with all of the other aspects of it, we would then uh, have um, 35 spaces. So that would be within compliance of what the zoning. When you move, when you add the side building, there's parking like that's in front of and then on the side here. You're off to the right side? Yeah, if I'm looking straight at the existing structure, okay. you're parking in the front yes. and people park here. That's correct. Be alongside the wall. Yes. Correct. So are you going to leave that parking there? No, that's going to be, it's going to be one continuous parking lot. Okay. So that will all open up then? That will all open up. That. that is correct. And there will be parking behind the proposed uh, office sure. building as well. So this wall that is currently here, right. that goes away and that's providing access straight through. Through. Okay. And could you show you where the curb cuts are again as far as the uh, entry? Uh, what we're proposing is right here, which would be opposite Garden City Drive. Okay. And then is there one on Kenmar as well, you said? Kenmar as well. And that would be almost, well, that's between the two driveways along uh, where the dry cleaner is. Okay. You said it would be restrictive. But how there would be no traffic exiting to the left to go oh, into, into the Kenmar. Okay. That is correct. As far as the uh, traffic circulation in the back, there were some questions about that at the Planning Commission meeting where the car is going towards the back of the property. Uh, Joe, can you zoom in on that a little bit? A little bit more? That would be this area here? Correct. I mean, it yep. was what we're proposing is uh, one-way traffic in a counterclockwise uh, direction. Mr. Uranko, who is the owner, uh, mentioned that... Can you, move, can you move the plan down a little bit so sure. you can get that specific? There you go. There you go. Thank you. Okay. So, so the entry point? The entry point is here. Okay. So this has full entry into the property, but restricted exit out. Uh, so what would happen, uh, as Mr. Little was asking, uh, this would be a counterclockwise circulation, and Mr. Uranko has uh, already placed the current employees of this plaza parking up into the gravel area above. Uh, what they'll do is they'll have them park in the back as well as any of the employees in the office building. And that's just going to be office space? The that's correct. Office space. That's correct. And then the functionality of the plaza will continue as it is. As is. Any other questions? And sidewalks will be put in? Yes. Okay. i got to ask. That, that, yeah, is that, fire lanes? Yeah, that's, I'm sorry? Fire lanes? Fire lanes. Uh, fire lanes are along the side here. And that's the restricted area through here. And the Planning Commission recommends approval. Yeah, and uh, there are conditions that are still outstanding that we're addressing at this point. So we're asking approval in compliance with those conditions. And when you remove that wall, are you digging that lot out to make it level, or, are you, or is it going to be an incline? Course? It'll be an incline. There's about a 7% incline between the two parking <laughs> lots. Do you have a rendering of the building, of the new? I do. It's uh, black and white. It's not in color. Okay. Council, once again, any other questions? Well, he's going to show us the building. But you, you've made arrangements as far as the water then coming running down the parking lot. Yeah. You've got it up, it's going uphill. It's, the water's going to come downhill into the shopping that, plaza. Yeah. So you're upgrading? Yeah, that'll all be underground detention Okay. Uh, for both parking lots. There's a double uh, detention system on the new proposed area and then a single one to uh, contain that. I think uh, you've been in contact with Lenny at our office to try to rectify those, right? Yes, sir. Linda, when a development becomes, when they do this, the reverse subdivision or the unification and the building becomes one, then they have to bring the entire site up to today's That's standards. what I thought so. Okay. Right. I just wanted to make sure that was happening. Thank you. And so here's the, uh, here's the rendering. Uh, let me get this okay over that way. So this will be the front. This is the existing plaza here. Uh, there will be steps that will be put in place. And then there's two uh, storefronts in the front. There's an entrance door that comes into here that helps uh, to provide access into a third first floor uh, location. There will be an elevator to take it up to the second floor. And then there's um, entrance points as to into each of those second story areas. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, number two is just the uh, the the, the, um, the building, and number one was the uh, subdivision. And uh, number three, applicant is the premier automation. Applicant is requesting site plan approval to construct. I can't believe he's been here. The 373 <laughs> square foot building addition and associated site amenities. The property is located at 1050 Rico Road in the M1 Plant Industrial Zone Addition. Planning Commission recommends approval of this application. You earned your money tonight, there, young. <laughs> No, we're not kidding. <laughs> I am ready for dinner. I did not eat before I came. You just made by the hour. <laughs> I'm dying here. He's like breakfast. Most of us didn't. Don't feel bad. He fell asleep. I seen him. <laughs> <laughs> I was offered a pillow. Um, very simple plan. What's your name for the room? I'm sorry. My name is Robert McCollum, engineer with the Red Swing Group. I engineer on the project. Um, the the project is is quite simple. Um, Premier Automation operates out of, uh, currently has office and manufacturing out of the adjacent building. They've purchased the building next door, property next door. They're renovating that building as through the building uh, permit process. Uh, as part of that, they are looking to enclose what is currently a an open patio in the back. They're where, just where is this located? Uh, this is on Rico Road. Um, Industrial Park? Industrial yes. Park, no. That's what I thought. Yes. Okay. Just to uh, verify. They have a, an existing patio area in the back. It's adjacent to where their kitchen is. They're just going to enclose it to give a little bit more kitchen space. Uh, and then in addition to that, they're looking to add some additional parking. So the, the darker gray area you see in the front uh, is going to be additional parking area. Um, we found out through the process of surveying the site that uh, the bulk of that area had been paved and then at some point in time somebody put like four inches of topsoil over top of it and put grass on it and never took the pavement up. Going green. Um, so we're kind of reutilizing that area, uh, adding some stormwater management for the site and that's really it. Questions or comments, Council? None. Seeing none, thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Okay, let's go over we'll eat. to I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, reports of our municipal you. staff. Bob, anything for us? Nothing. Mary. Tim, you have three things. Let's just run. Yeah, through. the Monroeville Jazz Festival uh, will be holding its uh, on August the 19th at the Community Park Amphitheater. I forget what uh, annual year this is for. It's River. The 15th. Okay, the 15th. Rivertown Rhythm and Brews will also will, all, will be on August the 26th at the same spot, Community Park Amphitheater, and the Monroeville Foundation Golf Outing will be September the 11th at Meadow Wink Golf Course in Murraysville. And that's all I have. All righty. Paul, any other words of wisdom, sir? No, sir. All righty. Josie, any words of wisdom? Nothing. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> you're my favorite. That's what you're going to get all the way down the line. <laughs> and we're going to go to reports of the council. Steve. Oh, oh really? Already? Bam. No, I just I appreciate the frustration of all the residents that were here tonight in regards to this and just allow us the time to uh, draft this ordinance in regards to the uh, seismic testing. That's all I have tonight. Oh. All right, real quick. August 21st, it's the solar eclipse. You don't see it for 375 more years. Go to the library. First hundred people there will be provided with solar shades. Um, the events from 1 to 3 p.m., They'll also do a little education about it. They're going to have some food and drinks there. All ages, no registration. What if it's cloudy? If it's cloudy, you'll have cool sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? That's it. Ron. Nothing. I'll address it Tuesday. Nick? Good idea. St. Bernadette Festival is going on tonight through uh, Saturday, the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 6 oh. p.m. It's definitely over for tonight. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. Paul. <laughs> so tomorrow and Saturday, um, 6 p.m., Azalea Drive at the Parish Grounds. Oh. And, uh, and we'll be discussing this seismic testing ordinance on Tuesday. Linda. Um, I'd like to thank everyone that came out. I appreciate your comments. Um, it's always your say as well. Uh, for us to hear. Um, and the only other thing is the $500 jackpot this Saturday at the Monroeville Senior Center. 1 o'clock, doors open at 11. Good luck. And I'll wrap it up very quickly as well. Thank you for all coming out. Uh, we will certainly address that issue, as Nick said, on Tuesday. And as far as that eclipse goes, if you don't have those glasses, please don't let those little ones look. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.